Well, well, hello, we are live. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Nick looks absolutely terrified. I'll think, no, I'm just... <laughs> did, did you not hear it? There's like a little ticking. So I was wondering, because before you started, I thought I was like, oh, that sound must be what it, uh, the, the computer makes while it's getting ready to broadcast. But it's still there after yeah. the fact. Uh, no, I didn't. There was a dun 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 dun. dun. That was the oh, no, no, that was the no, countdown. It's like, no, no, it's, it's like um, you know, like when people like go for those like wheels of fortune, and you hear like the the little uh, leather flap just kind of like blah, 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 blah. No, that's I what I hear that. right you're now. Crazy. No, you're crazy. I, I'm hearing that right now in the background. Okay. Well, that's that's entirely either in your head or it's your headphones or it's your computer. Anyways, hi everybody, welcome <laughs> to the Wednesday night art stream. I think we got like. One tell us in the comments out. who's right. <laughs> yeah, tell us in the comments. What do you hear? Am I crazy or is he? We all know it's Nick. So I am. Hi, I am Rini. Rini draws or Irene, whatever. I'm here with Ink Imp Nick. Uh, Nick or Carlos? We can't decide what to call him, but um. He, he is online, known online as Ink and Nick, and he is my colorist slash shading assist on my comic. So, um, I guess today I'll be doing some more comic penciling, and Nick's going to be painting minis. Uh, there's a lot of lag on his end, so hopefully you don't drop out. But, yeah, since your computer is uh, too old and... <laughs> it hates you too much for you to draw anything while you're on or, or while you're streaming. Um, you've resorted yeah. to painting minis, which is awesome. Um, Nick is also my GM, so uh, he does awesome minis. So hopefully you'll be, you'll be showing off some of those today. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, suppose before I started drawing, I'm going to shill my comic real quick because that is my duty. Arik Shurkan, hello! How are you? Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm gonna show my comic for a quick second, and then we're gonna get started with the arting. The arting. The arty, arty, arting. Oh. And uh, which is appropriate because I updated the Indiegogo. We have like two weeks left. Um, I extended the campaign, and then I got really, really busy with freelance, so um, I like kind of fell off the wagon with promoting it for a couple of weeks, but I'm going to be getting back on that wagon because we have two weeks I, left and there's, there's no more extensions. So I was um, surprised about that because you were like really on it for the longest time. And then so I was like, yeah, huh? She hasn't been mentioning it for like a day. <laughs> for, yeah. It's only like about a week, like the past week. I really didn't mention it, but it's cause I know we have like two weeks left, but also like, I was really busy and there's some like personal stuff going on, but it's all right. I'm I'm back, and we're gonna we're gonna keep on working hard on this because it's the last two weeks. So it's hopefully if I like really push it more, um, you know, we're still trying to get to that 10k stretch goal. So we shall not lose hope. We have got gone up a little bit since uh since I extended the deadline, only like five hundred dollars or so, but that ain't nothing. So hopefully if I'm not being dumb and lazy, we can actually reach that stretch goal. So as you can see on my screen, my crowdfunding campaign for my comic penis is still live on Indiegogo. Oh my gosh, you should go check it out. Uh, it's, uh, you can find a link in the description of the video on YouTube. And, uh, or you can just search fiendish on Indiegogo.com. And suppose I'll show everyone. Um, we we have we met our goal really quickly in like four days, but that doesn't mean we're not trying to get to um, our other stretch goals. Actually, our next one is eight thousand, and that means all the books will come with a sticker pack. But our highest goal right now is ten thousand. That means the whole book will be in color, and uh, I'm both me and Nick really want to see that because Nick is my colorist and he wants work and I want to see the book in color. So um, if you like what you see, hey, you should uh, pledge to the comic and let people know about it so we can give Nick some work. <laughs> so, um, and as you can see, we have some, here's some interior pages, blah, blah, blah. It is an action fantasy comic. This is the very first chapter and uh, you're gonna, it comes with a, ton of little world building extras and a ton of you know extra pages 
extra behind the scenes stuff. It's 46 story pages. Uh, wow, I'm really terrible at pitching this today. Usually I'm a lot better, but it's 46 story pages and I'm gonna put in, put in like at least 10 pages extra. So it's gonna be a big book, probably about 56 to 58 pages. And the perks will come with posters. There's a poster by me, there's a poster by Nick, and there's a poster by our, our friend Yvonne, as well as the cute little demon standy. As you can see, let me scroll down a little bit. This little guy. Oh, I finished art for this. So I have updated Indiegogo. So even if you haven't seen oh, it before. Yeah. yeah, even if you have seen, uh, even if you have seen the page before, I had just updated this yesterday. So here is the finished poster by Nick. And the one on the right is the one by Yvonne. And he is still coloring that, but that will be in color. And uh, so both of these posters will be available in a couple of the perks and the little demon standee that it's like a little acrylic standee. Um, you know, like a little acrylic toy you see a lot with like anime, like in anime shops. So I figure this is a demon that shows up in chapter one of my comic. And I thought it would be a fun little thing to make it a little plastic toy. So, so there you go. You that is also finished on there too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When I was when I was looking at the perks, I don't actually remember you mentioning that uh, the one that we were seeing there was a work in progress. So I thought that the finished one was gonna be, you know, uh, like flats, flat color. Oh no, no! Uh, I probably should have mentioned that more. But the earlier one was a work in progress. I should zoom in more. This is, I don't know why Explorer is so zoomed out. Yeah, the earlier one was definitely just a. A, like a rough draft because you know you want to get it's okay to work on things while the indiegogo is you know progressing like uh, most people like we have the, so by the way the whole book is done there's no risk of you not getting your product the entire book is done and i want to finish like at least the interior pages of the comics but i was like okay there's some stuff like the posters and the little standee the demon standee that you know i i can get started with funding the project before some of the extra add-ons are done, but the actual book is completely finished. So this thing is like getting printed. So no risk whatsoever with that. But yeah, so. Oh, oh demon, maybe you should tell them about done. what the extra pages are gonna be. The what? Oh, maybe you should tell them about uh, what the extra pages are gonna be because uh, you're always excitedly telling us about all the extra work that you put on those stuff. And I for <laughs> one, I, I always say that I, I love that extra shit at the, at the end of uh, yeah. Graphic. No, oh, you know, the concept art, yeah. the, the little tidbits about like, oh, this is what it was like to do this, all that. Yeah, a lot of concept art. I mean, I can show people, but it's not, I don't want to spoil them. I can show people some of the extra pages. Um, but before that, I do want to show off my little demon plaque. So here are all the tiers. So the basic tier is just the book. Um, I do not have a digital tier, the, although the book will be available digitally separately on my Gumroad account. So this book, book and one poster, book and two posters, book and three posters, book and three posters and a standee, and book and three posters and a standee and the demon black. So um, let me show everybody the demon black real quick. I'm sorry, I speak so quickly. <laughs> let me show, let's see. How do I do that? Ooh. This is the only one I have with me right now, but these, um, for the plasma tier, you'll get the book, the posters and a little acrylic thingy standy and also a handmade plaque like this. And I already got started early on these because, um, you know, I have like 21 or 22 to make. So I'm kind of just burning through them, trying to get as many done as possible. Let me see here. Okay, hold on. I'm going to show you guys some more of them because they're kind of over there, but hold on. <laughs> So how many have okay. you finished so far? Real smooth. I have done about six. So this was like okay. the little preliminary one that I made. Um, oh, by the way, we're like three backers away from hitting 150 backers. So if we can get 150 backers, I'm going to give away this one to a random person for free. So because that was a test run. But um, this is another one that is like a final, final one that is finished. So these are one of a kind handmade pyrography plaque so basically it's wood burning and i make them i hand make all of these for the plasma tier so at the plasma tier you'll get like the whole package of all the products but also this piece of original art so if you like how that looks you should check it out i'm really proud of these plaques i think they look awesome if i may say so myself jerry orda hello how are you thank you for joining us 
So, um, I guess I'll try to show everybody some of the extras. Or even just mentioning them, because I, I know that you always like uh, chatting about those, just for the people to know, because you always just mention like, oh, the book and all these other extra pages. Maybe that can serve um, as an incentive for people that might like the same stuff as you do. Hmm. What do I have? Okay. Well, the extras I have just cost of art, like really early sketches of the characters. I have the pencils. So there's like one, two, three, four, like five pages of the extras are just the pencil drafts of some interior pages. And I have a process shot of the cover. I'm wondering if I should, I can show some of this. I have a process, you know, like process images of how the cover got finished, as well as character designs. And I have an introduction to my constructed language because I am nuts and I created a constructed language for my fantasy project because I figure why That's not? It's fantasy, so I have to do that. It has to be a completely made up language. I can't use English. So and yeah. who knows if oh. who knows if any again any <laughs> any like D and D uh, fan or anything is sending it, but it's like that's the kind of stuff that a, a DM just like loves to get just random oh, yeah. random little tools that you can use. So it's like no, you just know that a lot of your players are not gonna have that, uh, and so you can actually make it, and they won't be cheating by looking at the player's manual to like how do you translate dwarves? They don't know because this is Irene's comic. That's that's true. Um, so if you if you can't tell I'm a D and D nut, then you will tell when you when you'll be able to tell when you read this comic because it's it's very similar to the D and D campaign. It's like Vinland Saga, Saga meets Berserk meets Lovecraft, and it, it's a D and D campaign. So that's how I pitch it. Um, so yeah, but I when I do fantasy, I don't I don't fuck around. <laughs> So I built a whole map. I have a whole world map. It's very detailed, and I have a whole constructed language that I'm constantly working on. And so there's some of that information on the website at fiendishcomic.com, which you should also go take a look at. But also, I have an introduction to that in the first chapter. Well, I can show somebody. Um, I can show some of these extras. Ooh, I'll show the uh, the cover, the process for the cover. And. I promise we'll start drawing soon. There we go. So yeah, that is the kind of extra content that you'll get with the book. That's just sort of the process for, you know, how I got to finishing the cover image. It was changed like a million times. And I'll show the final cover as well. Let's Isn't that the case with most things you work on, Irene? What? Isn't that the case with most things you work on? Hey, they hey, just hey, have like all, all of these different permutations, even when you're on a time Shh. limit. Shh. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> He's right, though. But listen, listen, listen. I, I'm a perfectionist, okay? I mean, if I have a deadline, I'll, I'll just like finish it, you know, but I am a bit of Perfectionist. Like, I tend to go back and edit things that are supposed to already be done. It's it's a problem. It's a problem. If you if you've seen if you know anything about my world map, oh, let me show my my world map while I'm at it because why not? We're never gonna get a drawing, guys. We're just gonna keep on showing off you know, extra content for my comic. By the way, we should have a couple people popping on. I think uh, Sim Pothier, who usually comes on this show, he's gonna be coming on later, and I think. Uh, some other other artists might come on to promote their projects as well as the show goes on. I'm hoping to stream for just a couple hours, probably till 10 or 10.30. So, so yeah, stick around if you would like to see some of their projects as well. Now, where is my world map? I'm going to open my world map so Nick can laugh at me about it again. Nick, I haven't edited it in like a month. That, that's, I'm so proud of myself. That, that's nice. I, I guys, I totally believe her. <laughs> I have it. <laughs> oh my god. Look. Here you go. Looky. There's my world map that I spent at least like 200 hours on so far. <laughs> <sighs> so. Yeah, I, this is like my eighth draft. This is the folder is literally named version eight. So, but <laughs> so so far it's. 
I, I went through, I, I almost like decided to just redraw it, but then I was like, no, no, there's really no need. Like, I, I like this, it's fine, I just need to edit it. But I'm so picky because the the first arc of the story starts out pretty simple. It's, it's a monster hunt. It basically, it's about a group of young men and women on a journey of vengeance against otherworldly monsters. So they're trying to find out where these monsters come from. It's a, like a very more character based, more private, you know, small group journey through the wilderness back to like this little town that was the origin point of this demon infestation. And it's more intimate and it's not like I'm trying to ease everybody into the world building, but eventually like with the second and third arcs, the story is going to be more expansive. We're going to be going to other cities. So I had to plan out the map, like I have to take travel times into account and like terrain into account. So is the D&D influence showing through yet or not? So. This is totally necessary. Don't listen to Nick. <laughs> no matter what Nick says. I'm the one that's saying that you can show it this. off. That's really cool. Okay, awesome. Yay. So um, this this is the map of the main area where the story will take place. And most of a lot of these cities the characters will be going to. And like Arvos, Arvos is a continent that is, you know, the, the focal point, even though we'll have some characters going to Taya and also Discara to the south and Taya to the east, but Arvos is like the main conflict point. So, yeah, and our story starts out like right in the middle, like in Alstad in these mountain ranges. So, so yeah, um, there you go. That is, <laughs> that is uh, my crazy, my crazy uh, comic project. So, Let's start drawing. Yeah. And all this, uh, all this inf world, world building information, the language, the map, and I have a 20 page preview as well. That can be found on the website at fiendishcomic.com. So. Yeah. <sighs> all right. I will be penciling a new page. Oh, the pages that you were showing off earlier. Yeah, these, I finished page one and page two, well, the pencils, but I don't know if I'm going to, like, do the, so for chapter one, because I'm doing such big pages, I'm doing like 40 to 50 page chapters. For the first chapter, I kind of did the pages in like 10, 10 page chunks, you know, I did the pencils, inks. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle chapter two. Chapter two is a little shorter. It's 43 pages, 42 or 43. But um, I guess we'll just go with the flow. We'll just see how how I feel about things. Uh, I have everything thumbnailed out though, so that's nice. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what I meant to ask about it. Yeah, all the thumbnails. I like to have the, the thumbnails, you know, complete because you don't want to like, because it's important that I want to keep everything within like the page count because sometimes, but like it, it's surprising. I'm getting pretty good at, I'm getting pretty good at estimating how and many feel, pages Feeling out the page. size of it? Yeah, yeah, which is uh, if you know, anybody has done comics before, you know it is it's really hard and it takes, usually artists, some artists never, like I have never really been able to grasp like how many pages, you know, especially with your own writing, because it always turns out yeah. to be more pages than you it's plan it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a That's lot really easier hard. when you're working on somebody else's stuff than yeah. if you're working on your own. Cause like, I always feel uh, like when I'm working on someone, I was like, no, we could just, we could just cut out all of these three panels and that way I have more space for this other one. This page can be mm -hmm. just cut out and become just a single speech bubble over here. Uh, I am so I, I personally I'm kind of glad that the people that I work with or work with recently because early on it was not that way but don't <laughs> get, don't get too anal retentive about the fact that I, I like to change a lot on page layouts when oh, I'm oh that's <laughs> nice yeah you you need to work with a writer that trusts you as well just block out these panels well it's it's funny because. I don't know, there's so much to say about like page count and it's very hard to get, you know, average or page count right. So so what's frustrating is when you're working with a writer that's not used to working for comics or when you're doing your own thing. Oof, yeah. But, yeah, it's honestly the most frustrating thing is when you're working with like a writer that's used to prose and they might be a fantastic writer, but it's 
It's different. It's like, like writing it's for like books 10 is... plus panels per page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like writing for books, like prose books, is different than writing for comics. So it's 10 plus panels every page. And like the dialogue is, there's so much dialogue. Oh, especially. And, and like the editor the will never tell them, you can't put this much dialogue on a page. So it's up to the artist to argue with the writer. But I can't, I have no space to draw people. You need to give me space. It's like, to draw it's, people. it's especially problematic during action scenes. And, and I, have, oh, I yes. have to work with some folks that just don't know how to make their characters shut up during an action scene. <laughs> Yeah, like, why are you talking? Have you seen people fight? They don't talk when they fight. I mean, there's some talking, you know? And, like, I get yeah, it that you want to like, put some exposition like in there. But, like, yeah, yeah. Like, there's there's sometimes, like, there's just paragraphs. It's like, I mean, <laughs> unless these are elves <laughs> or something. Like, maybe they'll go for a little bit more simple language. Yeah. Well, frankly, like, American comics... Well, American comics, I shouldn't say that, but like superhero comics will do that, and that's that annoys me. Like, I don't know, like they'll be superheroes will be like fighting each other and they'll be giving speeches about, oh, you're my greatest nemesis. And but anime does that too. It's just something that annoys me in general. No, yeah, it's just something in comics. It's, it's uh, it's really weird because especially like when you when you get to those in uh, North American and Japanese comics. A lot of the pages are consumed by action scenes, so you want to, you know, mm -hmm. get a little bit of bang for your buck, both on narrative and action. And sometimes it's just a little bit too, uh, what do you call that, um, greedy to try and get both at the same time. Yeah. Because, because we had those conversations talking about European comics where they're just so confident that, like, yeah, you know what, the action scene, just one panel, done. Uh, it, yeah. it was, I said, well done panel, and it and it does enough, but it's like. Coming from North American comics, it's hard not to be self-conscious. Like, uh, is, is this enough payoff? Is this what people wanted? I feel like it's enough, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about this early um, before. I remember that. I think, I think, I have been studying European comics more recently, and I, I like it. You know, because I'm trying to go with a model that kind of is more based on European comics, so quarterly or triannual releases with larger chapter counts. But I think to couple that with, you know, the actual art style, I should also take into account things like how they do paneling and how they do fight scenes. It's much, it's much more economical. Like it's, it's to the point, you know, you don't need like 10 pages to do it fights. Like sometimes maybe if you want to show the specific actions, because in my story later on, like I almost feel like, I think, you know, it's it's too late for me to change anything. And I am very happy with how Chapter One of Phoenix came out, but Chapter One is mostly a fight scene. And um, I think as I'm working on Chapter Two, I've changed the way I tell the story a little bit already. So like more panels and like like simplified action, I'm trying to be more economical, and like that just helps me get through the story faster. But also, I realize you don't need a whole lot of a whole lot of panels and show everything in a fight scene if like the motion is right and you show like the important parts like because a fight isn't just about you know you, you want character development to come through a fight so show the important moments where it's like oh this character is finally standing up for themselves or they use this move they were practicing in the last chapter and those are the important things and other than that there's no need to I don't know um, drag things on and like Dragon Ball Z or something, and you know, go for like five chapters of people just punching each other. At the same time, <laughs> Toriyama's art, every panel of uh, of action in, in the DBZ comic was so cool. I love, I love his flow of motion. It's really good to study to just see like from this panel, you clearly are being led to the other. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think I was just I was looking over the pages on the fight against Rikum on Namek a few days ago just to look at the line work. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I mean sometimes if an artist is really good at drawing on action, I think with Vagabond, 
I, I really appreciate it. Like the, the fight scenes would drag out for a long time as well. But then again, it, it got so philosophical and slow. But that was the point of the comic. That's why yeah, I like that it's... comic. It was about oh my the god! Time. I feel like Mamoru Oshii drawing a comic. Like, Lord help me. Yeah, if some people like that, then cool. It was beautiful <laughs> art, but like the story was just going nowhere. Such a bitch. It was a very pretty comic. <laughs> It all depends on what suits your style. I'm gonna make this this Shama lady really, really fucking happy. Cool. I start out with the scene where the this head shaman of the town is being a total bitch to Yomi. As a, Yomi's a dev and she's supposed to, like the dev race in my story, they're, they're usually thralls to humans and they're, they're supposed to like do what they're told and behave and, but Yomi kind of doesn't, isn't doing that. So she's getting screamed at. It's fun. I was angry old lady. Total see you next Tuesday. Seeing that uh, shaman old lady uh, always makes me think about uh, your that old comic that you did on college about shamans. Oh yeah, I think I've had a fascination with shamans for a very long time. But uh, that story went nowhere. So I I drew this comic for like during senior year of college and for a couple of years afterwards. I, I never got anywhere with it. I think I only managed to do like 30 pages, but it was about a, a set in the modern world, but it's about like a t remote town that still had sh shamanic practices. And it's, you know, in it, it was kind of like Mushishi where I had these like spirit, like little tiny plant spirits and nature spirits that were real, but only people, certain people could see them. And uh, my main character was a teenage girl who had to go on some journey to save her hometown. Um, now that I think of it, it's kind of like Moana, but in in many ways. But it's like kind of you know, <laughs> bit of a YA, bit of a YA story. Like I liked it, but I kind of I don't think I planned it out super well, and I totally lost interest after doing it for a couple of years. And it wasn't it wasn't the way I was approaching it wasn't the way I. I think I wanted to tell stories. Like, I don't think it was my voice. And I think I was too young. I didn't really know what my voice was at the time. But I also was largely doing that story because everybody was telling me that, you know, YA was a hot thing. And if I wanted to do my own comic, it should be YA. But man, it, it wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't going to be anything. I don't think I really had anything to say with it, you know? Mm hmm yeah, especially starting out, we just kind of look for something to just fill out those pages instead of, I don't know, uh, something that we want to say and try and find a proper vehicle for it. Yeah, when you're 21, what the fuck do you have to say? Not to be condescending, but I mean, some people... No, there's people that have something to say. No, some people. I didn't. I, was, I didn't have anything to say at 21. And at the same time, like, that doesn't necessarily need to be an objective because, like, you know, sometimes I will just follow artists that it's just all about aesthetic. And mm -hmm. if they just need a vehicle to be able to improve the kind of stuff that they like, like oh, gosh, like, what, what is the name of that, uh, <laughs> that North American um, comic artist that just, like, signs in on every single comic as long as they let him draw uh, jungle babes and dinosaurs? <laughs> Well, the hell's the guy's name? I feel name? like that's several, that's several people. That could be like... No, no, but it's like, he, it's like he, he just like gets hired for that. <laughs> and they sometimes, they, they outright make, they make titles for him that are just like literally like 
Jungle Bay Dinosaurs, the comic. It's just, the title is just like that simple. <laughs> but so, it's because he just loves doing those stuff and he will can't, like put it his all into that. Like multiple people are coming to mind right now, so I'm not sure who you're talking about. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that the guy that did Danger, Danger Girls or something? No, no, that's not it. Oh my god, those teeth look horrendous. But yeah, yeah, it's, you know, if a comic is, you can, I would follow a comic just for the, uh, the aesthetics too. That's a good point. And I wasn't a good enough artist to make that float either, so. Yeah, that didn't go anywhere. But I've, all, I've always had a thing about shamans. I don't know why. Hmm. Oh, yeah, look at that face. Ha <laughs> ha! So I'm gonna do one or two pages today. I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. How's your? Uh, what are you painting today? Oh, French. Huh? Oh, um, some. Uh, I have this uh, board game that uh, Ariel and I put some money into getting it because uh, one of our favorite artists was the one that actually just designed them and we were craving having his art you know, printed in 3D. Uh, but because I like it so much, I take forever to make every little piece and they literally have an, a, an army of these like magma soldier guys. So I have them in like different stages of completion Oh boy! Do you want me to enlarge it? Were you going to show? Sorry. Let yeah, me sure. Let me let me let me try and see because last last time we were trying it out, the light was just not working the best with me. Sure. Mr. Von Stugel says Frank Show. You're probably yes, Jungle Girls. I think right, so. Sorry. Yeah, Jungle Girl. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Frank Show. Let's see if I aim it around. You right. Oh, that's that's super back. Let's see if I put oh, the gosh. light over here. Whoop. Oh, I'm blind. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I can somewhat, whoa, can somewhat see it. Opposite side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, well, I can see it better than before. Nice. It, Dude, yeah, that's a, a lot of detail. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. So it's like, it's you like. a whole army of these? Yeah, I have multiples of these. And so I'm, Dude, I'm, I right just, now I'm just. I would just be like spray paint black and then like red dry brush. I know. <laughs> That's that's what I did with our set uh, our set of zombies side because I was like all I need is for them to be color coded so we can tell like oh which one's a toxic zombie which one's a normal zombie but for yeah. these ones I was like I put the money I love these little sculpts oh oh let me show you uh, look at these one uh, so that one's like like a little like chieftain guy mm -hmm. these guys there's like these little fat lizard guys and then there's guys riding the little fat lizard ones so let me see what. There's, it's a fat lizard. Is it a lava guy riding a fat? Oh my god! Is yeah. it a lizard with a huge mouth? Like, ah. Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, it's so cute. Yeah. So it's like this guy's just riding it. You can see the chaining. His like, there's like little magma balls on its, uh, on its, uh, belly. Oh my god! It's adorable. Look at that thing. It's so yeah. Oh, cute. and like here's here's one without the rider. There you go. Oh, this looks so and you, stupid. Yeah, and if you see, like, you see that, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but like, you see that little red it. dot, like, right at the top of the mouth? Those are its tiny eyes, yeah. too. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, that's amazing. What is this project called? Uh, it is called Besieged. B-Sieged. Oh, B-Sieged. Uh, actually, we actually have a comic of his. Let me pull it up. <laughs> Oh, you should. That sounds awesome. I love those little lizard things. Those look so cute. <sighs> yeah, I, I I always forget his name, but I you know I recognize his art. 
Uh, but yeah, he's called en Enrique Fernandez. I, I believe he's uh, uh, Spaniard. Yeah, mm -hmm. this this is oh, Irene. This is this is also a book that we got through a Kickstarter as well. This is the his the I think the second book of his story, Brigada. And it's just Brigada. this, uh, yeah, but you got it's like, and it's a story about dwarves. Uh, now let me show you how cool the art is. Really flowy. Mm, for sure, for sure. That's just single frame you. Let me see if I can do that. Nope. How do I, I can't have single frame just you. Okay. Yeah, it's a little blurry, but I can, I can see there's some really good motion there. Oh, that's a little dwarf. That's mm -hmm. so cute. And you yeah, see this cool. dragon just like behind him on the treetops? Yeah. Yeah, man. I really admire artists that can do so much motion in their artwork, but still keep the structure. That's something that I'm working on. It's just really hard to find a balance. That's cool. So, yeah, I'm filling those out. I think I have to do like 30 plus of these guys. Awesome. We don't have work to do. Uh, well, I have work to do, but I'm really stressed <laughs> out from the stuff happening right now in Colombia. And uh, I, mm. like we said, I, I can't work on my computer while we're here. So right. it seemed like a good time to do this. Well, I mean, if you have work to do, don't, uh, you don't let my stream distract you unless you want to. It's not about distracting. I outright cannot do it if I oh, okay. uh, to join you on the stream. <laughs> well, as in you say, okay, you know what? It, it's fine. It's fine. I need a co-host anyways. Good. You don't need to do paid work. You should be doing my stream with me. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that stuff has, those protests in Colombia really, really, uh, Worrying. I hope they haven't. Have you have you had any come close to your house like they did last weekend? No, no. It's uh, I feel like it's a lot easier for. Um, there's a much bigger deterrent for people to come over at this area. Mm -hmm. Um, because I, I just don't think that they have that much of a space to uh, be seen. Like the president lives close by and all, but you know, the big statements are kind of done around the center of town where like all the uh, go governmental buildings are at. Mm. Um, but again, it's, it's not that, it's just, I'm, I'm actually just really demoralized le just l um, looking at the conversation online and seeing how many people just can't see beyond um, the the damage that has gone to like pub, public property and stuff? Mm. They just uh, or they just they see people actually getting beat up by cops and they just like yeah that's what they get for being bums. Like it's not hard for anybody in this economy to go out and actually put themselves out there for a cause. Oh, that's uh, that's how things always are, isn't it? I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's always the, the case. Um, I feel like I, I, I obviously I was a lot less. I was I was a lot less involved in the U.S. You know, because mm -hmm. it's not my country, and it's not like I can really do anything. I don't have a vote. Uh, I'm just get screamed at to go back to my country. So I, <laughs> I have less reason to be engaged with it. No, um, so seeing my own people I've be been. caught on that is sad. Sorry, go, go ahead, Erin. What's up? No, I'm just gonna say it's the same everywhere. Hmm. Same in Hong Kong, same in Taiwan, same everywhere. Yeah. As long as you and Ariel stay safe. I just I, I feel really Wait, guilty. Oh, I feel really guilty about that stuff because I keep wondering, you know, I, I am really afraid of COVID and obviously, you know, having you know, family and stuff that like, I would not want to put at risk with this. It's like, how much is it that I'm not going to these walks because I actually feel like I have a reason to not want to like be around large groups and how much is, is it just, uh, uh,
just being afraid of being in large groups and just, uh, I don't know, just putting yourself out there, uh, being a, obviously being afraid of the police because police terrify me here. Good, and I was talking to Yvonne about it and you guys have it really bad with the police. Like I have, holy shit, there's no joke. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was talking really with Ariel about it earlier um, and how, like, uh, I think even as a, as a little kid, it's hard to not have a negative opinion of the police around here. Because, you know, like, it's, it's that whole thing. Like, not everybody is, like, actually in, in, the, in that gig to be a, a corrupt cop and stuff. But the fact that... Uh, there's just, uh, you know, like, you, you the... Um, uh, bodyguards or people that are just gonna stand around outside buildings and stuff like that are walking around civilian areas with, with shotguns it's just like you already know who's uh, who the priority is it's not like you know to protect and serve to protect that money and kill as many people and wound as many people as try and get close to you because who uses a shotgun in a civilian area that's I don't know from what I've heard with, I don't want to get too into politics on my streams. Right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but I want to let you speak your mind as this, this is important, but, um, but still, yeah, you're, from what I've, I was talking to Yvonne about it, also it's just really depressing. I've already had a really depressing week, but yeah, um, this stuff is important. And I do wish people, like there, we, I haven't heard anything about it in the US except from you guys, so it's kind of sad. Well, yeah. when, when do you hear about Colombia in anywhere? Though? That's true. <laughs> Unless you're That's watching. Well, oh gosh. Well, I, I, I think that this is like my go-to like of, uh, offensive depiction of Colombia. The that uh, uh, that movie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Just I could not believe <laughs> how they depicted oh, uh, Bogota, my God. and I was okay. like. It's like it's like they're like they're like the 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 sexy uh, the sexy North Americans just kind of like I don't know dancing tango or some shit or whatever, uh, and then like when they wake up through the through their window, you just see the overhead of Bogota, the capital of Bo uh, of Colombia, just like you just see just planes like bombing the city, and it's just like dark smoke and there, there's no nothing above a two-story building chickens and poor and, and, and pigs just running around i'm just like looking at that <laughs> i actually don't remember oh gosh it is it is hilarious uh to just see that one scene and, and you don't even have if you find it it's pretty much in the beginning anyway because i think it's like the the flashback to like oh how we are our, our sexy dangerous meeting back in uh, in that third world troglodyte place. <laughs> I, I do remember, I remember they they met in like a super, I don't know, a place that was portrayed as super third world. A, it was a hellhole. I don't it was, remember. It was Bogota, the capital of Colombia. It was I don't remember hellhole. what country it was because of course you would be Columbia. adventure. Okay, cool. It <laughs> okay, I believe you. Yeah, that that is, I guess that's what's most... North Americans have as an impression. I wouldn't know. That was really funny. I actually don't assume these things. So. I do. That reminds me, though. Did I ever tell you guys about them? Um, in the movie Lucy, which I love ScarJo, but... So, oh, that's, that's like uh, girl, uh, crappy girl Akira, right? Yeah. So, right, yeah. that one. Yeah. It was... Uh, it was like they wanted to make Ghost in the Shell and Akira, but they didn't have the rights yet. So they were just like, let's just, yeah, let's just, oh no, you're only using 10% of your brain. What if you could use their whole brain? It's bullshit, by the way. That's not actually what the science means. But um, so, so yeah, it's ScarJo playing this chick who like gains access to her brain and gains these like psychic mental powers. And it takes place, like it starts out in, she gets kidnapped in Taiwan and <laughs> Excuse me, I'm so I'm so distressed. I'm like having a coughing, but like she gets. By the way, you guys, in case you didn't know, I'm from Taiwan. So she gets kidnapped there, and like gets. In, I think she gets injected with something, and then these like 
they, they've got these like Taiwanese gangsters keeping her in this dingy dungeon and they portray the way they portray Taiwan is like this shitty third world hellhole. And I'm like, dude, they, did it, they make did it, it also look have like chickens you, and pigs running around in the foreground? No, it was just, it was a city, but it was just like dingy and shitty and like, you know, like damp, like cracking concrete everywhere. And like, it made it look like there were just like gangs running around all over the place. I'm like, that is the exact opposite. And it was in Taipei. And first of all, nowhere in Taiwan is that bad. Taiwan is really, really safe. We're like Hong Kong and Japan had a baby. It's so safe. And it was so insulting maybe, that they had- Maybe like, you just forgot about it, Irene, and it was- it was no, maybe, I didn't. I was there for it, was, years. it was it was Neo Taipei, and they just didn't pay attention to the subtitle. No, and it wasn't even like futuristic, where it's like, oh, maybe in the future, like <laughs> I know, they I know. <laughs> Like it was like this is supposed to be what Taipei is like. I, like, oh my god, why are you? Like, I know. I, I saw the trailers like for that thing. It it looked it, it looked heinous. <laughs> it was so like first of all, it was like a shit movie, but also like it was, it was so insulting because I'm like we are literally almost as safe as Japan. Like how dare you? so mad. I was like, oh, any Westerner who goes are just going to be kidnapped. Like, what are you talking yeah, I about? Mean, oh, I, I feel like with or without that movie, movie. <laughs> you're going to have your you're going to have your friends uh, from other countries just still ask. It's like, Dude, should I should I take like a toilet paper and like only only bills <laughs> when I travel? Oh, my God. It, it happens a lot. And it's it's yeah. confusing because I don't know it's well Westerners never know the difference between different countries in Asia, but different countries in Asia vary a lot by their development level and their safety level. So first of all, everybody gets Taiwan and Thailand mixed up. So it's always like everything that happens in Thailand, they're like, oh my god, if somebody's happening in Thailand, like it's some protest but I'm like, I read all as your family account, okay? like I'm not from Thailand. <laughs> Or like Thailand's getting, I don't know, like COVID spikes. I was like, Taiwan never has, we, we have we dealt with COVID very well. Okay. It's like, stop asking me. We're fine. Like we, we were, we were the first to block flights from the mainland. We're the only country that handled things very, very well. So, oh my God. It's so stressful. But. Hey, sugar Chris. I, <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Chris. Don't mind us. We're bitching about how how uh, North Hollywood American portrays. depiction of other yeah, of other cultures and movies. blasphemes our countries in their films. It is I mean, I'm not bitching. I I do find it really I'm funny. Bitching. I don't like I we, don't expect any better from Hollywood. No, we do get attention. It's this bullshit. Yeah. What? Sorry. Oh, I was just saying. Like, I don't expect any better from Hollywood. I just That's I'm just true. glad that it was that offensively funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's so bad. That's so bad. You're like you just expected at this point. Oh my god, I hate all well, Yeah, I mean, when do people actually hear about Colombia on any media that is not just about to like um, put the bad guy of the TV show uh, being a drug trafficker or something? I don't know whether it's like to have that shitty portrayal of your country is worse, or just like not being portrayed at all. It's like. Mm. We can't, like, Hollywood can't even portray Taiwan, or, like, they'll get to get people from the mainland, mainland China throwing a pin, so they don't even don't do know, it anymore. People, people, you know, it perpetuates itself. Like, they'll have a bad understanding of it, and then, without meaning to, they'll just remember, like, oh, yeah, I remember that. That's kind of like that. I'll depict it that way. I honestly don't mind it as much. I've, I, I've kind of grown with it. So I, I kind of expect other cultures to understand it, just in the same way that I, I don't really know about other countries, even in the ones that I'm interested in. I was like, I know that my depiction would be erroneous. Mm. Um, what I actually dislike is the uh, the more, um, when when people try and be like very, uh, what, do you, what, what even is this? It's like, it's the opposite of trying to be blissfully ignorant about something. Um, I don't know, like when they want to depict it in like a good light, but oh, it's just like, as over, ignorant and it's like inclusion for inclusion's sake. And it's just like, I don't know, if I if I wanted a a a story where it's just like, but what about the Colombian voice? I'd rather it be a Colombian that has something to say instead of uh some dude from Minnesota just like thinking that he's being inclusive by writing a story about it. Like, dude, you don't know what I was like, this is all wrong. This is 
really weird to for you to crawl in a Colombian skin suit and do this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, well, there, there's that problem too. There's I feel like that that's worse for me. I just I was like, yeah, it's your weird offensive thing, right? I, I will always know, like, yeah, that, that's not Colombia, and that's why I'm expected. That that's really... someone that doesn't know. Him. Right. You're <laughs> so that's like that really, really cringy attempt. <laughs> that, that's kind of true. I kind of feel the same way about you know, it's whatever people talk about, not just Taiwan, but like, oh, the Asian Americans are, you know, which. I know people mean well, but it doesn't mean it's not insulting to me because it's not still being ignorant. I just don't see that. I, at least just function, uh, functionality-wise, I just don't see the point of it. It's like if you're trying to tell a story about it, you're not really the the point of view that would be best informed or have something to say. So well, it just I seems think... like you kind of you just kind of like you kind of filled out the spot of someone that actually had a story to tell, and now a better informed version of that can't be done uh, as easily. On the other hand, sometimes you know, a really good writer should be able to do their research and put, their, um, put themselves in the shoes of anybody. So it just yeah, but I'm not, looking, I'm, not, I'm not looking for, for, I'm not looking for the, the cool story that the, somebody from outside that country is going to tell about the country, you know? The, the, well, you're 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 talking about actually stories that take place in Colombia. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we're talking about the depiction of the country, not really of the people. Because I know that every like for the people, I will always just have some Mexican talking about tacos and burritos, and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, that guy's totally from Chile. That's totally from Colombia. It's arriba, arriba. <laughs> but what are you talking about? Are you talking about like lumping Hispanics all together? Yeah. Hmm. You know what bothers bothers me a lot is sort of like how Americans will lump Asian Americans all together, or just Asians, because I'm from Asia, but I don't really, I don't even like, I don't even think I, I call myself Asian American anymore, because I'm Asian and American, and it's different, because I didn't grow up here, but it's kind of like, I don't know, again, I know people mean well, but it kind of bothers me that there's this sort of this assumption that if you look a certain way here and you have one sort of experience and then you'd be able to tell one kind of story because I also don't like, like there was a period where people would give me nothing, like nothing but, you know, keep on offering me work with Asian American leads. And I'm like, but I can draw other stuff. Like, why are you, why do you think this is the only thing I can do? And that, that really bothered me. So, but that's what you're talking about with, you know, people trying to overcompensate, I think, and that, that's not something that I don't know if the word is really for. overcompensating that I'm looking for, but it's just like feeling like there's people that actually feel like it's like they're doing good at like their mission to like include the stuff that they don't really know about. And again, like you said, it's like there's good intentions, but I just don't see the point of it. So it's like, it's not for me because it's like Colombian It's like, well, this is all wrong. So what am I getting out of it? And uh, other people are probably not looking for it because they don't connect with it. So it just, I don't understand the point of it. They want to they wanna appear, you know, good and moral and make them mm. feel good about themselves. No, to be honest, I, I personally have not been actually pitched uh, stuff with uh, Latino leads. And I wouldn't mind actually having a Latino uh, for a lead that, uh, to work on. Yeah, I think we talk about this. You, you, don't, you don't mind that as much. I'm I, really I would like to be able to insert stuff that I know about Latino culture and, and mm -hmm. comics, you know? I would like, you know, I would like it if it was like I had a say in the story. But the thing is, just, I never have a say in the story. And it's all, always like, it's not a culture I know about. Because just because I'm Asian doesn't mean I know jack shit about it. I don't know about Korean culture. I know a lot more about Japanese culture. But like, if it's like, it's never a perspective that I can actually contribute to. It's just how the people look. Mm -hmm. And that really annoys me. But if it was something like, this is a Taiwanese story, I'm like, yes, I want to contribute to that. And it's had never happens, though. You know, an example of what we're talking about that I, I think kind of connected with me, and a lot of people that go have been into comics might actually uh, know what I'm talking about, 
is the existence of Miles Morales, uh, the, the black Spider-Man. Because um, I remember when I looked at it, you know, uh, the art looked great. I read it and I was like, this, is, this feels uh, more engaging and young than the Spider-Man comics that I had been reading at the time. So it looked fun, but I always kind of uh, furrowed my brow when the fact that Miles was uh, half Latino came up. Because right, yeah. it seemed like such a it, it seemed like such a token move to just like hey, oh well he's half black and Latino so two minorities ah oh, more audience for one character and just like what about him is Latino? He did, they like say that they'll eat like rice with beans like once in a lifetime. The mother is kind of there. And I remember after a bit of just like having nothing about it, because the mom also is just like almost a non-entity in the story, they they actually integrated a sassy Latina aunt that would come over <laughs> just to did try to like, hey, Did you like that or no? I was, I was just, I didn't, I, like, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't care about the aunt. I wanted to know about Miles. Why did you have to make him Latino? He's not like me. And I'm not looking at him because he's like me. He clearly was designed and meant to be black. And I'm curious about it. And I en engage with it. Every time that they mentioned something about it being like, he was like, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. But what else? <laughs> can we can we go into the Green Goblin? It, it seemed like it was always a token effort. It was never fun. And it never came from a place of actually knowing anything about Latino culture. Mm. So it's just like it was not, yeah. It was like it was, it was not ill-intentioned. It was not like damaging to the comic, but I just constantly feel like we're kind of wasting screen time right now. We we could be doing something else. I'd like to know about the dad. The the, the mother's just kind of there to just say mijo. <laughs> yeah, like the two or three words that everybody just puts in there is like to us so many, like we're That's totally it. Latinos. Yeah, yeah, but it's like she will talk. She will talk in English for everything else. But she was like, "Oh yes, Mijo and uh, uh, the Quiero or Hola and uh, Gracias." It's like, wow, yeah, yeah, you're totally, you're totally uh, Latina. Like you said, that was a very North American accent too. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I get it. I get it. Just, just tokenization is just as insulting. I feel you. And it's, it, I don't find it insulting. It just seemed like a waste of time. Mm, yeah. it's, it's just functionally is not doing what it's supposed to, because no Latino is going to Miles Morales. You know, the only people that cared about him for his tokenism and it worked were black people. You know, and that's cool. It was a cool character, because you know I felt bad that they constantly just uh, got like the crappy uh, uh, bootleg of uh, like, you know I don't know like. Uh, row fillers <laughs> like Black Lightning. It's like he has thunder pants. Anyway, bye, Black Lightning. See you next time we do a group shot. <laughs> so that's cool. But the Latino stuff is just like, oh, no, nobody cares. No Latino cares because it's so half hearted. <laughs> it's really funny because I forgot that he was half Latino until you mentioned it. That's, right? so that's There's point. nothing about him. There's nothing right. about him that's so not Latino. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why this her face looks so bad on this panel. I'll come back to it. What what looks bad? I don't like her. Well, it's better now. I had such a hard time getting her face right. I don't know. I'm not liking it. It's fine. I'll move on. I'll come back later. That uh, that kind of reminds me. There's this whole thing where what I noticed was like Asian American characters. I think. A lot of Americans are af they're afraid of stereotyping the culture, but mm -hmm. consequentially, they end up not mentioning things that are essential to the culture because sometimes stereotypes are there for a reason. So it's like, well, when you write an Asian character, if you have their parents tell them they have to study hard and go to law school, then people will say that's racist. But it's it's like that's very true for East Asian cultures and. Yeah, but, and for some of those been there, it's like that's very true together, to the experience. But it's very true, and that's my experience. That's the experience of everyone else I grew up around. So 
like it's okay to point that out, but um, <laughs> it's just. Oh god. <sighs> I, I really remember when we when I when I showed you that screenshot for that Steam video game. Uh, it was like uh, I think it was like mobile uh, the, uh, mobile Chinese parents simulator. <laughs> you know, I find that kind of shit funny because like I have so in funny. my ass be so many times for not getting a good grade, and I think it's funny to make fun of that stuff. I am okay with that. This is true. Everything is like study, study, study. I had like no childhood because I would go to school. Like school would let off at 4.30 in Taiwan. I'm shaking my camera. I'm so angry. Like it will let off at 4.30 in Taiwan. Like in America, kids get off school at like 1.30. It's amazing. But in Taiwan, is we were in school till 4.30. And then I went to after school classes, Fuxiban, until like 7 p.m. Then I went home and then it was homework. Like I didn't have a TV at home. I didn't have a game console. And people are wondering like, why am I so weird? Like, what do you think? I was studying until like my dad got off work, basically. It's like, you know, it's you can't pretend it's that's kind of, not it's, the culture. It's it's like the the homeschooled kids, you know, just they just come from a very different environment. So when they come over onto a regular school, they do feel like the the, the weird bug that just crawled out of the sofa. <laughs> you know, I felt like that when I first came to college in America because I was actually there to study, and then like everybody was there to drink. I was like, what's right? going on? Is this school for weird? working? It was so <laughs> weird. You're paying so much yeah, money. Why are you just partying all the time? The, the fact that so mind. many people were willing to just skip it. It's like, oh, I have a headache. It's like, yeah, I have a headache too. But I, my parents paid a buttload for me to have an opportunity here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I can't, you know, I can't like, throw I that away. Like every day. I and, and I remember like when I when I would show up to the classes like early before everyone. And I'm just like, wait, it's like. I need to prepare for the class. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, everybody in the chat. This has just been, become this. This stream is foreigner complains about cultural shit. Okay, but uh, I hope you're all enjoying this. At least I do have some drawing going on. Um, feel free to <laughs> feel free to pop in with any questions in the chat. I am keeping an eye on comments and everything. So let me know if you have any comments or you would like to like us to talk about any anything else, even though I'm quite enjoying this, Nick. <laughs> so, oh my well, gosh. I, I, I don't know how easy it is to engage with the chat, but uh, I, would, I would definitely like to hear people's opinions on uh, on, on some uh, on some particular movies. Because um, I, for example, Coco, I know that had a really good reception in the US, but uh, and I, oh, and and Air and, and AC, my wife, um, who also does comic, uh, tried to talk about it a bit online, but people got super defensive about it because they were just like, "Oh, it's inclusion! How dare you talk about it? You're white! You're not allowed to talk about it!" Oh God! But, yeah, yeah, it was it was a lot what? like that. How dare? Jeez, but I was like, she lives in Colombia. Okay. Well, yeah, you but know, I, you get know, that I, I get that. I get that. European, so I get told I can't talk about Asian stuff. It's great. <laughs> but, like, this is why you shouldn't listen to Twitter. People are just stupid. Sure, but it's like, I, I do find it an interesting discourse to talk about that movie. Because uh, I was excited right. about it, you know? I've, I've always right. liked Pixar. That, that stuff is cool. Uh, and uh, when they say, it's like, oh, a, a Mexican uh, fantasy movie. And, like, I love it every time they've done another uh, thing. You know, a few exceptions, like Cars and the good dinosaur, but uh, those very obvious examples aside, uh, I find it very underwhelming. It just Coco. Uh, yeah, Coco. It just I, I wanted to like it, but the story was very simple. Uh, the ex the actual examples and shoutouts to Mexican culture seemed so basic, like Dia de los Muertos. Like, oh my god, that was like the one thing North American media ever depicts. And I assumes also that Latin America, just like everybody just does Dia de los Muertos. Like nobody fucking does that. Just just Mexicans. Um, so it's like, <laughs> you that, know, it's, in North then, America, all of South, like Latino culture is just Mexico. No, no, but it's like it, it, living in the U.S., having lived it, I get it. Because nothing else is shown to you. Everything is just like uh, Dia de los Muertos. They, they assume that's it. Like, like we even talked about like uh, – Super villains and comics that like there's there's like oh there's gonna be Latino 
uh, she was uh, she was to be a, a Colombian villain. It's like, oh, what does she look like? She has Dia de los Muertos face paint. I, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't what. To be <laughs> honest, every it time does look cool though. But it's not a Colombian thing. That's your it's, point. It's it, not it Colombian. Looks cool. And I and I liked it when I was a kid. The first two or three times that I saw it on a TV show, but after <laughs> right. that, it's like it's like those are some really pretty flashy Dia de los Muertos colors. That's the only color I ever see. Every right. time there's a new TV show about Mexican culture, Dia de los Muertos. <laughs> We're going to Mexico. Hey, we just stop by and Dia de los Muertos. <laughs> You're okay. It's there's just more. Always there's twenty like all all year long. Yeah, so it was, it was that and a comment about chanclas, which is just, you know, it's it's uh, comedic for a lot of Latinos because uh, it's stereotypic for the grandma, aunt, or mom to uh, beat you up with uh, a slipper instead of a belt. And so, like, people were like, ah, yes, yeah, like my, my abuelita. But that was it. Like, I feel like nothing else in that movie really showed being Mexican, and mm -hmm. especially the music. The music was so North American and so poppy. And when it's a movie about the characters wanting to do mariachi music, like only, what was it? La, La Llorona was like the only song that I felt like, oh, that feels very Latino. Everything else felt like so poppy and North American. Oh, that's so sad because like the music was a central point. So why mm -hmm. wouldn't they actually get that right? That was a movie that I was like, okay, okay, okay. They're gonna sing. What is the mo mo song like? Oh man, my God, that's like on par with "Let It Go." It's so so white sounding. <laughs> oh my gosh! Don't get me started on Frozen. Okay, so clearly I'm not Scandinavian, but having nerded out so much on like ancient Scandinavian culture, it's not like disastrous. But I also didn't like Frozen's depiction of like you know. Scandinavian culture. I thought it was stupid. That freaking dress! That stupid Oscar dress! <laughs> what the right? <sighs> I'm trying to not derail the conversation, but it's, uh, is, is it that, pissed me off so much. It, it, was, like, it was Scandinavian Grammys. She was supposed right. to have like these this ancient old culture. And I thought it was really cool that it was like it seemed like it was set in a Scandinavian country that have country that have been you know, Christianized, and then it, it had lost its old magic, but then Elsa had this old magic, and, like, only only the, you know, the trolls would have acts know it, anything about it, and when they opened the book about old magic, it was all roots, and I'm like, cool, but then she transforms herself, and she's in, like, this super modern 20th century Oscar dress. I'm like, it should be something old, and, like, it should, like, the building she builds should be ancient. It should pay homage to the source of her power, but it didn't, and... It just really annoyed me. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the first scenes of that movie really trick you into thinking that it's actually going to have something different in it, but that it just is just completely, uh, what is it, just uh, uh, bleaches out anything that could actually stand out as not being uh, uh, immediately identifiable as just North American. Yeah. Yeah, it tricks uh, you into into thinking it's actually going to be interesting. Isn't that funny? Oh, <laughs> an example of a movie that I like, but I was sad to see that uh, it it would not actually address any uh, of the uh, I don't know heritage or just visuals of the country was mm -hmm. um, uh, the Emperor's New Groove. I, hmm, right. I, I've I've always liked the humor in that movie. I thought that was a very cute movie, uh, mm -hmm. but I know diddly squat about Peru. It just sounds. It just looks like wacky, uh, wacky fantasy llama land. Uh, even even in the food, which I thought was so funny. They they go to just like they they go to like Pacha's village and they and they're like, oh yes, tri typical food from my village. Uh, yes, giant uh, roly polies with ac uh, acidic green slime inside them. <laughs> it's like, huh? <laughs> uh, could have been what they a eat good moment, Peru, to right? Could have could have been a good moment to show Peruvian food, <laughs> but everybody just eats bugs. Yeah. It's like 
It's like, oh yeah, yeah Peru, Peruvian. like Timon and Pumbaa, my like, favorite Peruvian characters. <laughs> That's all. That's all we need to know. Oh my god, <laughs> that's great. Well, like like you said, what do you expect from Hollywood? I I didn't expect anything, but even then, it just it was so weird getting to that scene. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. It just kind of felt like why set it in Peru then? What was the point of it? Uh, you know, something I haven't tried in the longest time uh, would be yerba mate. I remember being offered that when I was uh, living in Argentina, but I just, I completely forget the taste of it. But uh, the container always looks so cool to me because it's like a combination of a coconut and a pipe. I have no idea what that is. Um... It's um, it's an uh, it's an herbal. Tell me how to spell it. I can it's, Google it. Uh, it's an herbal drink that you can uh, consume out of this kind of like little coconut uh, cup, and you do it with this straw, this metallic straw that has mm -hmm. like a little ball at the end with little holes. So it's kind of like you're kind of uh, drinking a tea that you're making on the go, but it has like a very strong taste, and you you sh you can actually have it while you're kind of eating at the. Uh, uh, barbecues and stuff like that because it's that strong. It's uh, Y E R uh, B A space M A T E. Oh, you don't know that? You pronounce it differently than how Americans say it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the okay, here we get them in cans, Nick. Oh, really? It's just I've, I've never I've never been introduced to that. We always. Everywhere you went, even if it was like a, uh, a very small restaurant, they would always have the traditional little cup with the weird metallic straw. That's so cute. It's like a little coconut with an opening. Hmm. Yeah, no, we get them in cans here. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know. It was, you can actually get it in the U.S. Yeah. And like, have you, you had know? it? Yeah. Tastes funny. Not bad. It's funny. What, what does it taste like? Because that's the thing. It's like... It's been such a long time since I've had it myself. Mmm, planty. Like, isn't it kind of fermented or am I get it, getting it confused with kombucha? I don't think it's fermented. Okay. Mm. I don't yeah, think so, right. but I, it, it I could be like, wrong. <clears throat> it tastes like fruity. But a little more sour is what I remember. But I I only had it like once or twice in Austin, because everything in Austin mm -hmm. is super hipstery, and of course they would have that there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have made that assumption. Here. I didn't know that that was something that was hip somewhere. Mm. I don't know what's hip either. Apparently, they in Austin they think that's hip. Oh, by the way, for anyone who's just joining, uh, I am working on the, these couple of pages for Fiendish that you see on the screen, and Nick is working on minis. So, did you want to show anyone who's in the, who just joined the minis that you're doing now? Sure, but, sure. Give me a sec. Oh, you can also show the, the, the big ones that come with this thing. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Dude. Just a sec. No problem. We're having like, trouble with the lighting. Dude, we just had the hugest thunderstorm here. I'm like, I live around Atlanta, and we had like, it was like thundering Wait, so again? hard. It woke me up in the middle of the It was thunderstorming for two days straight. Oh. Yeah, it was. It wasn't just like one night. It was two days, and we had uh, one, day, one day we had we had the tornado that made landfall within the Atlanta city limits, which was fun. And then the other day it was just thunderstorming. It was so bad, like it woke me up in the middle of the night. But my yard was like almost flooded. It was great. Whew, yeah, glad it stopped us. Uh, oh, let me let me make your screen bigger. Let me move it over. Okay. Oh, perfect. 
Yeah, a little, little grunt guy. Even these guys come with variations. This one will come with like sickles and the other ones with just swords. That's awesome. And there's a, oh, here's the, here's the big one that comes with the set, like the big fat lizard. Yeah, I love that lizard. Look at that thing. It's so fat and cute. Oh my gosh. Look, it's so fat. Ah, I love it. Yeah, that was fun. It was like the first time I actually got to experiment with, with some metallic paints on the top of it. That's cute. I love the shape of that. Oh, man. That, and that game is super rough, too. Uh, the, like, at best, at best, you have like a 50-50 chance of being even able to win the game. Because it, it's so hard. <laughs> you, you have to fight <laughs> off just hordes of these guys coming at you uh, but it's one it's a it's a team effort to just uh protect this castle i really like it oh, but that's good. uh it's probably um, not the best game to play with uh, friends that haven't played something in a while because it's kind of like you know investing a few hours into this to probably die. lose and have everybody die <laughs> well well that's the way we like to play every week so I'm sure maybe one day we can try it out. Because we're pretty much expecting to die every session. Great. That's I, a great I hope to be able to play this out with you guys at some point. Um, That'd be fun. Uh, especially since Ariel figured out, uh, um, AC figured out how to do some it's so side. so confusing. You guys go by like different names and it's... I, I go with like... whatever whatever part of my name is fine. I like, it's just that I, I forgot that AC always likes to mention it that way because it's I, I'm the one that doesn't pay attention to like what what to refer myself by professionally. I just I, I like in camp. I've always liked little demons, so I just that's what I use online. But referring to when people talk to me and stuff, I'm always fine with whatever part of my name they feel more comfortable. I've been um, switching between like Nick and Carlos on my stream, so it, it you guys, if I ever say Nick or Carlos, is usually the same person as this guy right yeah, here. Yes, yeah, because it's, it's like both and it's yeah. It, it also helps that as a Latino, we, we just kind of, we come to terms with the fact that our, we have so many names because they just keep stacking through gener generations. So it's Carlos, Nicolas, Samudio, Diaz, Marino. Uh, <laughs> the, what is it like? I forget. There's, there's like, I think there's two or more, uh, two or three more. Oh my <laughs> God. There. Oh, that's so funny. You know, it's, well, you're... Your first name is Carlos, but mm -hmm. you went with Nick when you came to America as you thought it would be easier for gringos to remember. But like, yeah, it, okay, is. It, it is a lot easier Carlos for North Americans to remember my name. It's not huh? that hard to remember Carlos. I don't understand. No, no. no here's the thing. It's not, it's not hard to remember the name Carlos, but I, I did notice that it was a lot harder for people to remember that I was Carlos because it's a very okay. common Latino name. And it's uh, a lot of times people are just not exposed to that many Latino friends. So it just was like, oh, were you Manuel or Paco or <laughs> no, Carlos, the other so really weird. common Latino name. <laughs> so it, it seems to, it just seemed to be easier to uh, kind of stick in people's mind when this is just Nick. And I, I'm okay with it because it's so still common. part of my name. Nick is so common though. I have two Nicks in my family. Whatever people are more comfortable with, uh, I guess. Uh, even even, <laughs> I even my parents, care. even my parents actually refer to me more as uh, Nico or Nicolas. They don't really okay. refer to me as Carlos because uh, that's my dad's name, and so it oh, seems it was just okay. easier to refer to me that way. We have like a bunch of Carlos in the family too, so. <laughs> um, yeah, we're trying to see the other way around. Our words are like just a sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is, so I don't think I mentioned this. People in Taiwan, like the only people that call me by my Chinese name are people in my Taiwanese family. And they don't call me by my actual Chinese name. They call me by like a nickname. So they say Anan. But like Taiwanese people also say Irene. Like I think... Everyone, because I was always like the mixed kid. I was always like the weird kind of foreigner. So they, they got used, like a lot of people use 
English names as well, but you know, they just say it with like a Taiwanese accent. So in Taiwan, people call me Aiduin. It's really, it's really funny. Aiduin? Aiduin. It's Aiduin with a Chinese accent. It kind of makes me think it's like Aiduin <laughs> from Tatooine. <laughs> I'm from Tatooine. Oh, that would be cool. But yeah. But nobody really calls me by my actual Chinese name. Hmm. Which one? Well, it's it's also a common thing here in Latin America to uh, Latin America to have uh, nicknames. It's really common in in Taiwan. It's sometimes. I mean, it's weird. It depends on the person. I know people where like. Everyone would always address them by their full name because full names are so so short. It's only like three syllables, so it's really easy mm -hmm. to remember that. But then other people, nobody will know their real name. They're everybody will just know them as like Milk or Sky, and it's like, what's their real name? We don't know. They just have the weirdest nicknames. So it varies a lot, but like nicknames are very common in in Taiwan. Is it common to also have multiple nicknames? Um. Not really. Usually you have one and that's just what people call you. No, oh, okay. Hmm. We we collect or you, you with a lot of people yourself. here. With you introduce yourself with anything like at all um, I had a lot of part time jobs in like restaurants and stuff during high school and it was all you know like other than that because I went to school in like an international school, so I was around, you know, American kids and ABCs, but like in when I was at work, it was all other Taiwanese people, and people just introduced themselves to their like nicknames. Like I don't know what their real names were. Uh, not really sure what Eric is referring to when he says like the third person you're speaking to. Is that like? Is it like the the other folks that you were saying that might join the the chat or? It was there. Eric was saying that I was wondering the third person you were speaking to. You're speaking? I hope you guys can hear Nick. Can you hear Nick? Because I can. <laughs> oh gosh! That that would be if weird. I had been like it's speaking like, all this time, yeah, and I just but it's a third person. <laughs> so third person. I'm not sure. Well, I had invited a couple other people on, but I'm not sure if they'll make it. We'll just see. So far, it's just us. No, it's we don't have a third person right now, um, and I don't think anyone has tried to join. Sorry if I'm not understanding you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Confused. Come in a I don't know. Oh, you were saying about nicknames in, in South America? Oh, 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 I was just wondering if it was also common. Uh, for you guys to have multiple nicknames because here in Latin America, especially between families, we have mm -hmm. like tons of nicknames for each other. Uh, like my with my sister in particular, I think we have like seven different nicknames and we just come up with new ones and permutations of them as time goes by. That's so funny. No, or no, like, no. People stick with one. Yeah, oh, so okay. my family, I'm, I'm, it's technically an an, but they just shorten it to an and but like age matters in Chinese culture. So I'm the oldest in my generation. So all my cousins call me An Jie. But Jie just means An older jie? sister. An Jie. <laughs> jie. <laughs> is that, it, so is, is that, uh, does that work as just a, a label or is that also like a, hierarchical thing within the family be like oh you are like the older one this is like your title as such or is that just like uh just to be more specific on just your age range and who you are both like you wouldn't i mean if they just call me on i'd probably smack them you're not supposed to do that i'm older okay <laughs> So it's like how oh, you, so it's like, so it's, so it's actually culture, a first like, thing. Nisan or Nisan, like you have you say that you don't just call an older sibling by their name. Oh, okay. Yeah. And like I, I would do the same if I had older. Well, I have like second cousins that are older than me, but not my immediate cousins. So like I wouldn't call them by their name either. I think like when ages, you know, 
in most East Asian countries, age is like much more important than in Western culture. Man, yeah, I, I feel like that would make it. Uh, hmm. I feel like that, that doing that kind of thing would create a distance in in their relationship. Uh, kind of makes me think of when I was really young and my folks would uh, uh, make it a point that I could not uh, address them without like uh, saying like sir or ma'am, you know. I was like, it just created this breach where just like you're over there, you're not, you're not, we're not pals, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're not to speak to me. Pretty much. So I was like, I, I can only imagine, like, man, what would, what would, would I even be friends with my cousins if I had to address them as just like, oh, uh, older cousin son, <laughs> hello. <laughs> I, I'm so humbled by you visiting us. It's not that. See, it's not. It's not that formalized. Like it, it sounds I don't like know. You've you seen it, it in you know? anime. It's just like anime. It's like. But it's like when you describe it, it's like you would like you said like you would smack them if they referred to <laughs> to you outside of like a friendly way. Sounds... In a friendly way. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Smack your young <laughs> your younger family members oh. in a friendly way. I get. Yes. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Corporal punishment is endorsed in in Asian culture. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm just, I'm just not, not like that's me. any different in Latin America either. You know, no, that's, listen, I, I grew I was, up getting insulted every day. Okay, I'm not even. Kidding. Yeah, I was. We were just talking about it. Like, I think it was just not not just Mexico. There was all Latinos. Like when they saw Coco, it's like, oh yeah, la chancla. Yeah, I remember my mom getting that slipper, that rubber slipper out. <laughs> <laughs> You have that. And what we had was, um, <laughs> this is so funny because it's like so stereotypical, too. We had a, like, it's a bamboo thing. It's like a bamboo brew, but it's. Yeah, yeah you told us about this. You told us about yeah, this. Yeah, but it's like not just, you just happen to have a bamboo broom and you always meet the child with it. It was specifically for feeding children. <laughs> and every household would have one of these. So you take, like, Thin bamboo, like, because bamboo is flexible, right? So, like, you take the thinnest bamboo strips and then you bunch them together and, like, tighten in the bottom together. So it's, like, kind of this, like, broom with, like, flexible, like, really strong but flexible sticks. So it's, like, the end of a Catholic whip, but it's made of bamboo. And that was just be specifically a tool designated for beating your kids. It's great. You know what? Aside, aside from you actually uh, having mentioned it and told us about this, I, rem I think it was on the TV show Fresh Off the Boat that I saw that actually being shown off as well. I think it was like... Was that the one with the Taiwanese family? I think so. Oh. Uh, I didn't uh, watch that. I remember that. that there's like... Uh, it, it was pretty funny. Uh, it's just it was really hard for me to find a place to actually stream it at. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like, I remember there was like this couple that uh, the... Uh, the the grandson of, of this grandmother just did not like her and would just like tell the the, the girlfriend just do not engage with her you do not want to like it's like oh how can you be so disrespectful to your grandmother uh, uh, uh you should show uh, I would love to learn about her and her culture and the grandmother just hated her and was super racist <laughs> and she would actually ask me like bring me that bamboo it's like yes ma'am of course here's the bamboo <laughs> It would just smack, smack, smack the white, the white girl with it. Oh, I did. With the, like the Taiwanese grandma would do that. Yeah, and then but oh my and, god! But then, the, but then the girl would be like, yeah, yeah, you see, we're bonding, we're bonding. He's like, dude, oh god, like, you don't weird. have to like her. We all hate her. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, that sounds accurate. Well, I had a very sweet grandma. But my mom was the one who was whooping everybody. <laughs> Fun. That's hilarious. I didn't watch that show. I couldn't find anywhere to watch it. Same. Hopefully, it will be easier to uh, go back to it. Sometimes after after the uh, after it's been released for a while, it'll just be easier to find it to stream somewhere. Yeah. Oh, Chris is joining. Yay! Hello. More people. What up? Hey, Chris. Oh, Welcome. Hey. I thought I would uh, 
So I had to hop in and see how you all was doing before We're I had good. to go to work. I got oh, about right. 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you worked the night shift. We're yeah. good. We're we're drawing and bitching about um, weird non-American childhoods. So yeah, I I only I only got to hear part of it because I was you know getting a shower and getting ready for work and stuff. But I did hear a little bit of it. I heard yelling about Frozen and something called Coco. <laughs> and, I don't know. <laughs> Oh yeah, Nick you just, was you just need about to mention it, and Irene will go off with that one. <laughs> yeah, you just just, just mention it. it. I mean, it's like it's just not even my culture, but it's like it was so bad. He clearly, it's just Hollywood doesn't respect anybody. Okay, even when they pretend they don't get no. anything right, it's it's. Oh my god. No. Yeah, what's no. funny was like, like the old Mulan was not that bad. Like, it wasn't accurate, but at least it was, that was done well, but the new Mulan, oh, yeah. okay, I'm going to stop now because I'm going to just smash my computer if I keep going. I mean, there's a reason why so many people actually love that movie. That it was, was actually really good. Fun. But it's like, mm -hmm. oh, it was a super accurate, but it wasn't in a way that was like, we were pretending to like represent anything. It was like, it's supposed to be kind of fantasy, but it was yeah. accurate enough. And, you know, um, it was respectful. And I liked it a lot. And I don't, I don't understand how they screwed it up. You know the original Mulan story, by the way. I like to, I like to mention this. Um, we had to memorize the original Mulan poem, so I still know the whole poem by by heart. And uh, in the original poem, she was nobody cared that she was a woman. She just revealed she was a woman after she served for twelve years, and everybody's like, "Cool." So there you go. <laughs> that was an invention by Disney. Wait, so was she in the original story, was she also hiding it for all that time? Yeah, she was she was hiding it. She hid it for twelve years. But it's like, well, it's not fun nobody cares. It's not like it's punishable by death if your woman joins the military, you just get sent home. But she actually so, was never found out. She just she just like finished her military service with honors and she went home and then she revealed to like her her um like other Soldiers who were visiting her that she was a woman, and they're like, "Oh wow, cool!" Oh, that was the end. <laughs> oh well, that's a thing. Hmm. No, but that's not dramatic enough. Yeah, they have to you know, put the whole Hollywood touch on it. Yep. I mean, not even the Hollywood <laughs> touch, but it's just like it does seem like wasted drama. If you make people actually care about it, you can actually put some stakes on that. That could be fun. I mean, just like. I don't know, like her accomplishments in, in the military are enough drama, but I don't know. I'm fine with it. I just think it's funny that they had to add that. No, I agree. It, it is. It's uh, noticing that the, that that's something that you would clearly focus on, you know, from a more Western, Western perspective. So obviously you would have to make it uh, a thing. No question about it. <laughs> yeah. How dare they? Yeah, we were talking about something else, and I totally derailed the conversation. <laughs> Don't mind me. <sighs> how did the, uh, how is, oh, yeah, that's the shaman lady, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just, this is page four. I'm just continuing with my pencils. For chapter two, I thought of working on some other stuff. I thought of maybe working on the cover, or um, I was going to work on some environment shots. But I thought that's not as interesting to stream as people. I thought if I'm going to stream something, it should be something with faces. So I'm just going to continue with this scene right here. So yeah, it's been weird. I my faces haven't been coming out great today, but you know it happens. Um, this is just Yomi getting yelled at by this shaman lady for like four pages. <laughs> It's fun. fun, fun, fun. Oh, and I showed everybody. I I updated the uh, the Indiegogo. If you if you haven't seen it. Uh, no, I haven't been keeping up. I usually don't get e updates in my emails, so I have to go to, like to the actual campaign page and you know look at it. Okay, let me uh, let me take a break and show everyone in case anyone. Uh... Just joined today. Just joined. Let's see. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I haven't posted many. I think I posted Nick's poster. But also the update on your little figure. Oh, I haven't posted that yet. I should post that. No, as in like an actual update. Like you can my, oh, write okay. a little blog post on Indiegogo. There you go. So yeah. Um, it went up a little since last time. It's been crawling, but that's because I haven't been like promoting it. I've been terrible. But I'm going to get on it again. I've been talking to people about doing streams. So hopefully that'll be happening. Um, yeah, I updated the, let's see, the figurine. Next poster. I put in the final colors for our next poster here and... Uh, the standee is done, yay! And I posted that on Twitter today too. So that's the final art for it. Whee! Yep. Oh, looks good. Thank you. Fun, 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 fun. Yep. So most of all the stuff for the um it's only we have Yvonne's poster isn't done, but the other stuff, all of the extra, you know, items. Except for like the handmade stuff, like the wooden plaque and everything. Everything is done so far. So, yay! Happy. Gosh, there's, there's. Oh, and let me let me show you guys. I also got super carried away with this like environment design. Um, Let's see. I posted it on, did I post it on Twitter? I don't remember. Post it on Discord. Know. By the way, we have a, Fiendish has a Discord server, guys. And I posted it in the chat early on. So if you scroll up in the chat, you should be able to find it. Or I should post a link again. And I'll do that in a second. Let's see. Trying to open this file. It's not listening to me. There we go. Yay. Oh, yeah, I've seen that on Twitter. I did post that. Oh, I, I, I haven't seen you color it. Yeah, well, that's because you were working on it when you were talking to us. <laughs> I got way too carried away. Yeah, I remember I was, I was inking it during our game last weekend. Mm -hmm. but I colored it, too, because, hey, why not waste more time? Yay. <laughs> so <laughs> this is... I, I, yeah. Nothing. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, this was this is Eskel's shack. So this is the little tiny house that he lives in on the outskirts of town. So we're gonna we spend like probably I don't know. We spend a good chunk of time around it. We don't go in it a lot, but I think I want to really design everything and make it you know flesh it out and populate the interior and everything just to make it feel like it actually fit the character because it, it, East Coast is an important character. So I just want to get it right. And I felt like I hadn't done any environment designs in a while and I get kind of antsy if I, you know, don't get to do environments for some time. So I don't know. I want to like warm myself up into doing environments. So it's, yeah. It's very detailed. Thanks. And that, that, uh, that fella is not exactly a rich man. <laughs> no, he's not. So he's he's clearly not rich. He's a bastard born to a mom who abandoned him years ago. So this is like the shack that she left him. And the townspeople also shunned him because of his birthmark. It's supposed to be something, it's supposed to be like a curse. So you can see on like the door, they carved this the symbol of his birthmark on the door and like they stay away from him. So um, he doesn't exactly have like a very nice life. So... It's like this tiny shack and I figured I'd populate it with just, it seems like it's very humble and it has all the things that he needs. So there's like enough room to cook and like he's, he likes archery so he can fletch his arrows and he, you can see in the back, he makes bows and so on. He sells those for money as well. But you know, just small things. I wanted to make sure I got it right. But yeah. <sighs> Unnecessary work. Well, it'll pay off in the end. I hope so. I hope so. People, people will appreciate the the amount of uh, passion and effort you're putting in. I hope 
so. <laughs> that's my social for more content to just show off in uh, social media anyway. Me too. Mm -hmm. I really just wanted to, you know, because I kind of, sometimes I, I worry about whether I should show something on social media, but I realized people really like seeing behind the scenes stuff. So I figured, yeah. okay, I'll just show all my behind the scenes work. And sometimes some of it is just, I have to make some of the stuff Patreon exclusive, but most of the stuff I'll just post on Discord. I post on Discord, I post on Twitter, I post on Patreon now. By the way, I have a Patreon, so I have some extra content on there if you really, really are into this comic and want to see some extra stuff. But for example, I've been uh, I've been working on the language, like the actual character writing system of the language. So I showed everyone the alphabet writing system that's available on the website already, but that's the phonetic writing system. I have a character writing system and I did like three pages full of the, like the character writing system and I posted that on Patreon. Um, so I guess you're wondering like why it takes all to do everything. This is why. The world's a comic, Irene. Uh, that, that's like a, like an easy way of making some kind of like a little contest, uh, like making contest? like out of the blue uh, when you hit like a milestone or something on your campaign to just drop a message on your language and then the first person to actually decipher it and follow the instructions probably can win something extra or something. Oh, I already have hidden Easter eggs in my comic. So there's uh, the fire chicken, Nick, the derp chicken. It's hidden oh, yeah? in chapter one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this, so there's this <laughs> really stupid looking, it looks like, here, I'm just gonna draw it on a new layer. So, there's this very dumb looking chicken that, it, it looks something like, this is my best drawing that I've ever made, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like this okay it's just so atrocious oh my god i'm embarrassed but it's literally just a ball with chicken some... yes it is this is ball chicken and it has like two bulging eyes and i have been hiding this i call it dirt chicken and i've been hiding it in my comics ever since college Excellent. so so um it it is in chapter one of fiendish and i think i'm going to give a reward out to anyone who spots it first. It, it is in one of the pages that I've already shown, but I did, I turned like the layer off. So you don't know where the chicken actually is, but it's in chapter one, it'll be in the print book. So the first person to find it and, and sh pr show proof to me online, I'm gonna figure out something to give to them. But a derp chicken here, let me even out those googly eyes. That sounds fun. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this up because this is just why not? This is a joke that's been going on for like ten years, and you know, I have nothing better to do. So just just gonna see the little derp chicken riding around on one of the little tentacle dogs. Just yeah, just, it'll, it'll just be a nice little surprise in every chapter. So that's a thing. Um, of course, all the sound effects are in the narts, and so if anybody's an insane person, you can try to decipher those. I'm, I'm just kind of picturing uh, the dirt chicken just showing up on the flashback where, where everybody's dying and stuff. He's just in the, in the background. Hey, you know, come on, baby. Just standing there, like blood all over him, like mm -hmm. <laughs> picking at the ground. You never know. Maybe. It could, it could a, be anywhere. You never know. Just another day in the life of the dirt chicken. Just another day, yep. It's my mouse card, my best friend. <sighs> I don't like wasting time. <laughs> what was what is that? Uh, what is that line from the Street Fighter movie? It was like, uh, uh. Oh, guys, what what is the name of the bad guy? It's like something bison. No idea. Don't ask me. Uh, I wouldn't know. Gosh, do what? Like, is it, I think like Chun Li in the movie is is like going to like kill him for revenge, like something like he killed his, his her parents or something. Uh, but when he, when he confronts when she confronts him, she he just doesn't remember, and oh, she's yeah, just he's astounded, like, and, he, and he's yeah. like, wow. Oh. Uh, yes, for you, that was the most important day in your life. For Bison, 
That was a Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, Great line. Great line. Oh, I, did, I know that line. It's, uh, it's from that Street, Street Fighter, Fighter, the movie. Yeah. Yeah, that's that from like, Street oh. Fighter. Oh my god. What is that? It's so funny. It's sad that that gentleman died. He was he was a great actor. I liked him in Adam's family and stuff. Oh. Uh, what was his name? Ray Liotta, was it? Uh, it was um yeah raw uh, it's like raw julia oh, man. Uh, sure. i don't have my phone with me i never yeah. watched it but what's new of course i haven't watched it i don't watch anything yeah raw julia pretty sure he passed on yeah, yeah he passed on yeah that was that was, his, that was his last film yeah. Which he was in because his grandchildren to, uh, told them that they would love him to take that 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 role. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's a classically trained actor <laughs> just in the street fighter. <laughs> it's cute though, as far as grandchildren. <laughs> I've been having so much trouble with the faces. This page. All right, moving on. Oh, that's pretty good progress. I think. Oh wait, have you also been working on that other page where we see the uh, the back of the old shaman's head, or no, was that already at that point? There's already at this point. No. I was okay, just okay. No, I was like, I've, I've been seeing you. I know that you've been working on the page to the right, but I was yeah. facing on whether or not you also like started taking turns with the other one or something. No, I'm not that fast, especially when I'm talking to people. <clears throat> now the page on page on the left was what I was doing last week. Yeah, so it did. somebody online asked me how I do my perspective grids. This is how, guys. So I literally I keep like. See, I keep a grid, just like a vector grid. Uh, well, it's not a vector, it's bitmap now, but it's just a grid with, you know, colorization. And every file, like my standard setup for a comic page file, and like my standard comic page file is, you know, I have sketch layers, I already have a, like a color, um, color overlay set to it, inks, a border folder for uh, the, uh, the panels, or like a box already set to the right, you know, panel border width, and then I have a text layer, and I have this grid in in every uh, every file, and then I just free transform it when I need perspective. So it's very easy. Apparently, Photoshop has a perspective tool. I never use it because I can just do this, and it's just as fast. <laughs> and I don't, I don't need anything fancy. So, there you go. That's what I do. Unless it's like one point perspective, then it's just I just find a vanishing point and just pull the lines out from it. It doesn't take that long. I don't understand why people find gridding up so hard. It's not. Oh, Johnny Cage. Is it like here. a practice on it, probably? Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. You were saying something, Chris? Oh, just Johnny Cage is here. Hello, Johnny Cage. Hi, Johnny Cage. Yeah. Speaking of Street Fighter. <laughs> Yay! What's up? Yes, coffee. Oh wait, no, that's not Street Fighter. That's Mortal Kombat. I haven't watched the new Mortal Kombat. It didn't really interest me. I'd rather just go back and watch the old one, to be honest. <laughs> I like the old one. I don't, I don't know how much you would, I don't really see the point in, in watching much of it for us. The story, because I mean, the the graphics for those video games are, are pretty out there, especially with all those uh, fractures and uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, internal bleeding shots. <laughs> and it's not like anybody's watching Mortal Kombat for the story. 
but I mean, about? a lot of people are really excited about it. I remember in our, our, even on our D&D chat, both like Danielle and Yvonne were like super excited about seeing Sub-Zero once again on the big screen and having yellow Sub-Zero say, come over here. <laughs> yellow yeah. Sub-Zero. Sub can tell things in Mortal Kombat <laughs> Oh, that, that reminds me. I drew a, I drew a Sub-Zero last weekend on the sketch chat, the sketch stream. I haven't finished it. <laughs> yellow Sub-Zero. He throws yellow snowballs at his enemies. <laughs> Let me show everyone my, my Sub-Zero. Yeah, I don't know jack shit about... Uh, Mortal Kombat either, but somebody it oh was gosh. a theme for the stream, so wouldn't that be funny if like they if like in like the it's one of those terrible adaptations from the nineties that's just like they just look at it and it's like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's blue sub zero, red sub zero, yellow sub zero. Like, <laughs> and they actually have him use like yellow ice powers. Yeah. <laughs> that would be so funny. Uh, that would be that'd be terrible. <laughs> Johnny Cage says, I hated this movie so much. Johnny Cage did not like this movie. Well, I hope you like my sub zero. I need to finish this. Oh, that, oh you actually were, you were drawing that one, I mean? Yes, I was drawing it last weekend on Sims. Oh, wow. Drawing stream. Speaking of, where is Sim? He was supposed to be here. Thanks. What a great cover. You probably, so didn't, even, without, you probably didn't even see your link. I posted the link so early today. I am betrayed. <laughs> Well, you also got to understand, Sim has like a million DM groups he's created. <laughs> so he he probably just doesn't see it. I know. I know. Just being a bitch. Yeah, I should finish. It's kind of weird seeing a character without uh, in your style without having his whole face exposed. I, I I almost didn't even recognize it as your style, Irene. Really? I've been told yeah. that the way I draw noses is very indicative of my style. Probably, because like, yeah, like I look at that, it's like it doesn't look like you drew it, just because I That's don't see the full face. I'm used to really like identify uh, any old old art of yours that I haven't. It's like, oh yeah, I redrew really that because I can see those faces, and only you draw those faces like that. That's weird. Oh, that's very interesting. That what's funny is. I was shopping Fiendish around to like a bunch of local comic shops and I don't know how effective mm -hmm. it was. Probably wasn't effective at all, but I tried. So, and I, I gave like, I handed a copy over to this one guy at, at, a, at a comic shop and he take, took one look at it. And I was like, oh, I recognize your style. You did Gwenpool, didn't you? I was like, what? Cause like, I was drawing yeah, a totally like different way, but yeah, apparently. So. Because my work on Wemble does not look like my work on Fiendish, but okay. I mean, I guess it's like the, every it's person still has your a style, way. I read. A certain, I know, okay, faces. I know, I know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. It's ten oh three. I gotta go. I'm actually oh, late. Shit. All right. <laughs> I gotta put the clock in four minutes ago. Bye. Oh, bye. <laughs> Take care, Chris. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, he goes to work at ten. That sucks. Mm. Uh, oh, sub Johnny Cage is Sub Zero is the one who's just a blue scorpion. You're right. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know shit about Mortal Kombat, so I'm just gonna agree with the audience here. The audience is always right. <laughs> Irene just like, yeah, am I right, guys? <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> I know so much about pop culture. <laughs> Oh my god. Gosh. Like, doesn't know anything about video being for pop culture. It's like, listen, I know a lot about certain things, but I'm not going to pretend. I really know what's going no on about this. That I don't understand <laughs> what? How <laughs> dare you not know every single franchise that has ever existed? Okay, Ari. Yeah, fighting games weren't exactly my thing. What do you say? That nobody was going on about that. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I was just talking to myself. Just fighting yourself. <laughs> I'm just fighting. I'm just fighting myself. Yes. You should be used to this by now. This happens all the time. Am I going to finish this page or am I not? I don't want to go too long. I was planning on going. Uh, I was planning on doing a shorter stream today, but um, I don't know. It's. Mm. 
I was in a bit of a bummer mood today, but not so bad now. I'll try to finish this page. What do you What do you think, chat? You guys cool with hanging around for a little while longer? I'll be working late no matter what. Let me know. Is that how you usually time them? I try to go around two hours, but then like last week we were just um, hollering and having a roll and we went for like three hours. I didn't even notice. I try to go a little two hours though because it's, um, oh no, I don't want people to, you know, people get annoyed if it, your stream goes on for way too long. Or I don't know, everybody's different. I see some YouTubers I, I that. <laughs> Huh? I never yeah, understand man. that. Why do people complain about having more content? It's not like anybody's ever forcing you to watch the whole thing. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Some people, some people don't like it. I, if it's me. I, I, I like long streams. And, and, and I, I've I seen like, people being very vocal about it too. <laughs> yeah, I like really long streams. Like I, I watch YouTubers that complain about movies for five hours straight. Like I love that. But some people bitch about it, so I don't know. But it's like, is it? Is it it's okay. Some, some people, just, like, I don't know why audience wants. People, the people sometimes like schedule certain times because it fits within, like I don't know, like works or breaks or things like that. So it makes it convenient. Uh, well, I think it depends on your content because if you're trying to like video essays are different than doing streams, and if you're streaming, you're just hanging out with people. I think there's a little more leeway because that's just what I'm doing. I don't have time to make yeah, like, like, you know, video essays or tutorials. I just stream and talk. Because we, we've talked about this before. And like, for me, I just, I did not understand it. And I was confused when I started to first see people actually complain on YouTube videos about them being too long. But it's not like they were like, I don't know, chilling out a product or something for like two hours. They were just making content. So I, I never understood like, what is the problem? Because even if you don't have the time for it right now, if you enjoy the content, doesn't that just mean that you can just pause it and have it for later and you have more content than before? Because I, yeah. I run out of content all the time. So that's actually super good for me. Nick, you're, you're trying to apply, a, you're trying to find a logical reason behind a completely illogical phenomenon. Is it? It's, I don't, I don't it's know. people bitching like, on the internet. It, well, you know, okay. I but there's I do, so many. There's so I many, there must understand. be a reason why. Okay, it's, there is a reason, I'm half kidding. I don't mean to, I mean, I do mean to make fun of people, but also, so I think it's easy for like you or I to, you know, cause we sit in front of the computer all day and we have all day to just listen to streams and podcasts. But I think probably part of it is most people, they have a job, they have a family, they have, they only have so much time to consume content and they may like someone's content, but they don't have that much time to watch anything over like 30 minutes every day, but they want to hear what that person has to say. So that's why they, they'll like tell creators, like don't make your videos so long because they just don't have the time. That's the only reason I can think of, which is, you know, that makes sense. I guess I'd but like that again, to hear, maybe I should go into like the comments because like, I just usually just don't talk to people on, on these uh, on things, even on social media. I rarely engage, but uh, I should ask like, where is it coming from? Because I, I would like to know that oh. just <laughs> people don't know what they want. <laughs> yeah, people, that's true too. People don't know what they want. Yeah. I mean, also, every I, creator I is different. I feel like that's what I have to tell myself sometimes when, when uh, <laughs> I'm DMing a game, just to make myself just be calm <laughs> after the end. Like, they don't know what they want. I'm, I'm trying to find it. Like, I feel like I'm listening. They don't. They don't seem to know what they want. <laughs> Why do I feel attacked right now? <laughs> I feel personally attacked. By the way, for people in chat who don't know, Nick is my DM. I'm one of his players. So. But it's true, we don't know what we want. I have no idea. No, it's different with every creator. I get annoyed if content is too short. Right? Me too. I feel like, oh, a new video came out. Oh, well, that was just like an announcement. Or oh, I them love just saying like a half-hearted like, joke review. It's like, 
I want a full thing. I, I got to sit down for a while. Yeah. I want, I want long content that I don't have to look at. I can just listen to mostly. It's great. Yep. That's just what suits me because I'm sitting here drawing all day. Oh, this face is turning out all right. Finally. No, maybe I'm just Let's like... see which one's the one. Oh, hmm. maybe you're just having a hard time with the younger faces today? Maybe. Well, I was, uh, for my day job, I was painting walls all day, so that's probably it. My brain was just, like, not in the right mode. What, like apartment building walls and stuff, or...? No, like mean? decorative walls for, like, game assets. I was painting walls. So oh, okay. Walls and pillars, yeah. It was for a game, so... What I do for money. What I do for money. Oh no, it's comics, that's okay. Go. Yeah, I am constantly starved for like YouTube content. Um, I think recently I was on a spree of like true crime on YouTube mm -hmm. and then I was on a spree of I'm like I have a weird like a, so I go between like true crime and then I'll be listening to like linguistics videos and then the psychology lectures I just listen it's great like there are a lot of really good professors I just upload their lectures on YouTube so I'm just I'm just gonna listen to psychology lecture today because I'm weird but um, then I'll be listening to about like how some serial killer was murdering people in Poland in like the 1700s all day. Um, it's fun. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm back to true crime channels. Like I've literally gone through entire channels of content, and I'm like, I need more content. Oh, and uh, uh, paleontology. I was watching. I showed you guys last weekend. I was watching stuff about like. Paleontology and ancient animals and stuff. Oh, right. Yeah, I remember that conversation. Yeah. Which was really interesting uh, because I found I wasn't expecting it to be that useful for what I'm doing because I, I just came across it because I follow some like science channels and um, I was actually looking into human evolution, but then the same channel had a bunch of videos on like prehistoric animals and uh, I started watching those videos and it's it be, turned out to be really useful for doing a fantasy story because what I've noticed is I don't see a lot of fantasy works, kind of like the animals and, you know, you have like, you know, different elves and dwarves and like humans, but what about making the animals fantasy, making the animals yeah. different, but not like wild, like made in abyss, like totally fucking out there, like anime animals, but like realist, like if they actually exist on earth, but it's that they don't look like the animals that actually I exist think it just, in our present time. I think time. it just tends to, re, it tends to require a, a lot of work to do so. So unless someone that really kind of wants to make a statement out of it, they, they try and avoid it and just occasionally put some crazy monster out there. But like the general fauna is, tends to just be mundane. It's not that hard with like, with the internet though, with YouTube. I found this whole channel, which uh, I think it's called But it's not a passion for a lot of people. It's, mm -hmm. it's not a priority or a passion for a lot of people. And it does require quite a bit of work. I mean, you've seen it, how it, like uh, how much work it's been taking you to like make maps in your own language and stuff. So it's like a whole other one of those things to do. Well, I think, you know, I wouldn't expect everyone to do what I'm doing with the language on maps. No, I think the animal thing isn't that hard, though. You just draw. I don't know. That's a lot of work to do, dude. Is that? Yeah, because like, it's, it's, it's like having to, how can I put it? It's like, think about having to do a establishing shot uh, somewhere and having to think of like, oh, yeah, but in my world, bricks are different. Uh, and so I have to think about the bricks for this for this town and the bricks for that other town. Like, once you get it, you you get it done. But it, it's it's another layer of work that you have to keep adding for the setting to be very uh, varied. I guess. I definitely appreciate it as well. I mean, you know, I'm a huge creature guy, but I mm -hmm. I I do notice that sometimes when people cannot just do some of the stuff, but they clearly don't want to, and it's just. <laughs> Johnny Cage is like, uh, creating a new language. I can barely speak English. 
<laughs> I've gotten a lot of comments like that. It's fine. I can barely speak English too. People are like, oh, you speak so many languages. I was like, yeah, I speak several languages badly. Please. Yeah, I don't really see how, I don't know, maybe it's just, um, I feel like because with animals, you don't have to be as accurate and exacting as humans. Like you can make some mistakes with animals and it's like, we don't really mm -hmm. register it as much. So you can, it's easy to come up with like fantasy animals. So I guess, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's once you, if you have to do it for a whole comic, it's, it's going to be a lot of extra work to remember. Like every time you have a carriage, oh, it's not just drawn by a horse. It's drawn by this other weird looking creature. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And like, I, you know, which one, it, an example that I remember was uh, when AC and I were working on um, the, uh, the, the comic series, the continuation for the sixth gun uh, with Oni Press, uh, Shadow Roads. There was this one, um, panel where we were like in the desert and I remember the script was like uh, to just show like oh like the the, the desert is uh, is merciless and so there's like a shot of just like a vulture but I was telling Ariel and he was like ah uh, you know what we've seen like three shots of like the desert is merciless throughout the very long series as the sixth gun and it's always a vulture I was like why don't we use a snake and uh, you know an oviparous uh, snake and then when she was doing it uh, Ariel is not, uh, AC is not used to um, actually differentiating between different snakes. And so when she was doing it, I was like, no, 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 that's the structure of a venomous snake. And I was showing her like, no, this is how the jaw works if it's an oviparous snake because it has to be on the slodge and stuff like that. Uh, and I was really happy because I've never seen an oviparous snake shown in a North American comic book. And I really like them. I think they're really, uh, really pretty to look at. So if it's just not your focus, uh, of course you would struggle with it, and it's an additional amount of work. Uh, but yeah. it's definitely something that I would personally enjoy if I was making a fantasy world. I would probably put more effort into the animals than on the people. Yeah, well, you're a you're a creature guy. Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, right now I'm thinking, oh, it's not that hard, but maybe when I do it, I'll want to stab myself. Yeah, no, I can I can see how you know it's you, you can't just robot brain the drawings. You have to actually think about everything. Oh no, you have to think about everything. <sighs> I do want to put like weird creatures, like non-standard creatures, in Venus show, not just like magical animals, but like already in. Um, You'll notice in even in chapter one, I decided that people don't ride horses; they use elks. So elk and deer, and the, like most of, at least on the continent of Arvos, I think like horses would be more of a thing on other continents. But I'm also going to use a prehistoric form, like different kinds of hooved animals that look like horses, but they're not quite modern horses. I don't want to use just modern animals that live in a Holocene, like. I want different looking animals, but like on Arvos, the continent that things, you know, the main focus of the story, it's people riding deer, so. Yeah, it, whenever I see those pages, it just makes me think of Ashitaka from Princess Mononoke. Uh, that's kind of, that's kind of, that was kind of what I was thinking of too. Well, it started out that oh. way. I was like, I remember the, I mean, the elf. I, I so feel like it's it, very noticeable because I know you like yeah. that movie a lot. Yeah, I mean, have you noticed? Like, look at Cosmere scars. It's very obvious if you know their references. It's like, well, what's interesting is okay. Oh, I've had a lot of people mention Berserker Villain Saga, but it's probably also because that's the way I describe the story. But I haven't had a lot of people mention that, like, the Princess Mononoke influence and also FMA. I think I think once I introduce the magic system, people will mention FMA more. But like so far, nobody's really said anything about you know anything reminds them of FMA. But we use it's fantasy, and FMA is more like diesel punk or something. But mm -hmm. dude, I love FMA, and I definitely have a lot of influence from that story. That was a good freaking book. Oh, 
god. Oh my god, I'm going so slow. Oh. Oh. You know, I had completely forgotten at what time you actually did the streams. So I don't know. I, I think it's because of our games and uh, the other games that I've been playing through the weekend that mm -hmm. I, I was thinking uh, when you first posted, it was like, oh, right, let's, uh, we're going to do the stream today. I was thinking that I was going to be at 3 in the afternoon. And oh. so I actually had a different plan of what to do while oh. we were chatting. And uh, I had to kind of scramble to set up the table and uh, get ready to just like paint minis or something else instead. Because oh. uh, well, in my mind, I was actually. Yeah. No, sorry, what were you saying? Uh, I was saying that uh, in my mind, I was actually going to uh, be working on that uh, dice tower that I've just been kind of having sitting around in the bedroom unfinished for the longest time. And that requires a pyrograph and uh, kind of melting this uh, foam. So, you know, I was going to use the fact that it's daylight and I could open the window and stuff. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, I mean, first of all, thanks for making it on the stream anyways. It's cool. I hate having to just talk by myself. Oh yeah, and I, if anything, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't join for some of the previous ones. I just, I have not been feeling uh, uh, well on those uh, last ones. Uh, but it's always nice to hang out here and chat. Oh, well, you can make it. Is uh, you know, let's take a lot of energy to stream. Every weekend. You, you were literally sick a couple weeks ago. <laughs> so it's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I have like a normal person job. I mean, I work from home, but you know, I have to, I can't stream during normal work hours. Yeah, hours. I have a normal people job from these bills. I'm so normal. <laughs> it is a clarification that sometimes has to be made, especially when you're dealing with other people in their creative career, because we do tend to assume that you have, uh, you know, control over your schedule and just kind of yeah. stay late because you want to, not because you have to sometimes <laughs> to be able to fit in all the other stuff that you want to do in the day. Well, also, uh, also, I was freelance for the longest time, so sometimes even with you guys, I have to remind you, I have a day job now. Mm -hmm. I might be able to finish this today. Oh, my God. I mean, this page wasn't even that complicated, but... I'm just so much slower when I'm actually talking and streaming. Yeah, I don't even know how you even go at this pace while talking. It's a lot harder for me to be able to actually be doing uh, pencils. But yeah, I know that your pencils are pretty much like your inks by that point. These are my pencils! Yeah, so I, I would not be able to do pencils while talking to people. I always have to, if we're doing that, uh, I would have to be at inks just because I already have the guidelines. I don't have to be thinking that much. Mm. I think uh, I won't be able to do thumbnails or roughs. But for <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's a whole other level of focus. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to focus when I'm doing my thumbnails. Pencils are okay. <sighs> I'm not doing anything like super crazy on these pages anymore. Yeah, I, I've only done two of my uh, little magma warrior guys in all this time. Whew. Is that slow? It takes for you? so much time. Oh. Oh, I'm going to take a little break and uh, look over the encounter tables for the, the game. Oh, great. Yeah, Nick's planning what to throw at us this, this weekend. Oh, no, no, I'm not planning on it. Um, you know, <laughs> especially I, I kind of plan, I individually plan like five days ahead mm. uh, and things like that as far as encounters, because 
making them on the go tends to kind of make them really half assed and just gonna be like, you know, flat plane, hit something. Mm. Uh, no, I just, just like to review them, see how well balanced they are and stuff like that. <laughs> Because I haven't re I haven't visited those tables in a while. Yeah, we do put so much energy into our encounters. We're we've been trying to wrap up this module for like three sessions. It's not happening. <laughs> it's, I don't I don't know how we're. I mean, going. I, like I, we I told the you boss guys. Fight and then we just we're just like running all around town, and then we keep on having more threads, and then we we're not ending things. We, well, I don't know if threats, it's more like <laughs> dealing with everybody's very poor health <laughs> more than anything. Well, that too, like, I mean, we have people that literally are going to, like, pass out if they, like, walk yeah. too hard at this point. We almost had a um, TPK. So. Yeah, poor AC. And poor we're not AC allowed to heal because just... our, our healer is... Our healer can't heal, and all of our other characters are out of spells, and we're in this rinky dink town that doesn't have magical healing, so we just have to limp around town with like negative HP yeah. trying to get shit done. Well, <laughs> this is why it's taking so, forever. Yeah, yes, it's like as always, Irene is always just uh, that very, like, oh man, the world is so hard. Also, she also picks uh, races that, ca uh, that have so much race points that they count as three characters <laughs> by themselves. <laughs> And also makes a point to pick a race that cannot be healed through normal means and then complains about healing. <laughs> Guys, listen. Constructs are amazing until you have to heal them. <laughs> I've, I've yeah, learned yeah, like my lesson. We, like when we finished the encounter and you were just like, oh my god, Nick, how is anybody supposed to finish the campaigns like this? How would a normal party? It's like, well, you say that like this, like I didn't rebalance this to account for the beast that you brought into the campaign. I always tell you, like, you bring that stuff, I'll have fun with the CR, because now I have to rebalance it. <laughs> you guys, with, with your character around, you guys essentially don't even, you guys don't only just count as though you were a full party, even when we were just three, you guys count as being a full party of a level higher, <laughs> thanks to your character. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, Yay! well, uh, th these guys are going to be a little bit more decked out than they were before. <laughs> this guy's going to have some class levels added to it. <laughs> I get to Guys, add more monsters over here. <laughs> I'm totally not a power gamer. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good fun. It's just that I'm, I'm always just surprised at the end. It's like, that is so unfair. How is that supposed to be the appropriate level? Because you have a fucking monster rolling about. <laughs> So, uh, in Pathfinder, I don't know about the actual, like, normal Dungeons and Dragons, but normal Dungeons and Dragons doesn't let you be as creative, so I have no idea. That's why I like Pathfinder, because I can do crazy shit with it. There's, like, a third-party race called Gingerbread Person, and it's a construct race, and that's what I'm playing at. So I have, like, this tiny gingerbread person, like, this magically animated gingerbread man who's a barbarian. And he counts as a construct. He's just been like slaughtering everything. It's been so great. I mean, he doesn't just count as a construct. He's straight up like there's, there's yes, things yeah. in the game that like help you like count as one. You straight up are, and you get all the benefits of one and all the detriments of one. <laughs> that's true. He he is mechanically a construct, uh, but that's also why it's so hard to heal because you can't just use like heal spells on him. So it's been a giant fucking headache. Pretty powerful though. Heals everything. <laughs> like killing things. Or mildly yeah. aggressive. <sighs> yeah, and also, like, I, I, I've told you guys, like, you say, like, we've been trying to finish it for, like, three sessions. Like, I, I've told you guys, like, we can just end it and say, it's like, yeah, and then there was a happy ever after. I'm like, I, I asked, do you guys want to, like, finish, like, loose ends and stuff? I enjoy that stuff, and I think that, uh, just having full sessions of just roll, they can be pretty fun. But it's all up to what you guys want to have fun with. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I think, I think uh, like I said, I just don't want to be told when the game is about to end because then we're, we never end it when we're like, <laughs> when you tell us, like, this is yeah. the end of the campaign and then. I, I'm expecting to be done, and then we're not. I get you. I, I get you, and I completely agreed with you on that one. It's just 
And, you know, like, it was also just something that I was just not doing before. But, you know, I, I know that I am pretty harsh and I am uh, stingy with, like, rewards and stuff because uh, everybody's like, it's like, no, no, you didn't earn it. <laughs> uh, but um, the thing is just that, you know, at a certain point, I, I, you guys were telling me that you guys felt kind of demoralized because we hadn't really finished any real campaign, any modules. And so I kind of got used to just think, oh, guys, we're, we're there. You guys did it. You know, congratulate you for guys for that. Because I, I know at that point it does warrant it. It's, it's a lot of work, to, I, I know, to finish my my kind of modules or campaigns. And then I kind of got used to it. But I, I do realize that there's like there's too many drawbacks to doing that. I should really just do that. Like when we're actually done and finished, it's like, yeah, congratulate you guys. But stop trying to worry about preemptively doing that because that's just me trying to compensate with how harsh and just uh, uh, cold I tend to be <laughs> through the rest of the game. Freaking brutal. Oh, my God. Not to bore you guys with, with stories about our campaign and none of you are involved in, but anyways, we're constantly struggling to stay alive. It's great. It's the only excitement that I have in my life, D&D. <laughs> don't like how that panel is turning out. Whatever. We'll know what it is. Let's see. Oh, that looks a little weird because it's such a like close-up angle. Hmm. Well, these pages will be so. in color. Can I, you tell I us like her ear? Yeah? Uh, you know what I would say? If, if you just kind of uh, thicken up the the outline, I think it, uh, it should work just fine. Yeah, because it's really, because it's not a human ear, so I'm worried it doesn't read. No, no, it, it reads just fine. Okay. I'm hoping these will be in color, too, so that'll help. That'll be nice. Purple. That would be nice. <laughs> uh, maybe uh, you can just have the old lady get a little bit more aggressive so your colors can enjoy drawing some more gore in between. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> you're, asking, you're, you're asking me to beat up my little character right at the I mean, she gets beat up later. All right, calm down, Nick. Yeah, but not on the first pages that are. That are oh, that no! Are getting, that are getting no to get colored. <laughs> oh, dear. You must have blood. I mean, you could just spray blood all over the room for no reason. No, oh, yeah, I'm sure you won't just panic over it. <laughs> and then, I'm not gonna and then prove tell it, me to waste knows how many hours editing that. Yeah, you can do it if you want. I'm just not gonna prove it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. You can also just pay me for work that I'm not doing. <laughs> Why would I ever do that? Oh man. I hope this whole comic is in color. That would be freaking great. Ah, yeah. It's hard Sounds to get. It, yeah, it, it really is hard to get to like the level where you can, you know. Um, I don't know. I'm like totally independent. I don't have like companies promoting me, and it's my first book, so it's just hard. But hopefully, like you build up an audience with as the chapters go yeah. on. It's, it's understandable to just have. Color. And it's also just understandable to just have some compromises along the way while you get there. Yeah. Uh, even if we don't get, you know, in the first few chapters in full color, I'd eventually like to go back and color them, you know, if the, mm -hmm. if we, if, like the funding starts to pick up in later chapters. And also I, I do want to do like the intro pages in color just so readers can see what the characters, like intermittently see what the color, like the characters look like in color. Just like Mongo, mm -hmm. so at least we <laughs> just can like, like uh, it. Then, then, then just do a, a Toriyama, uh, Toriyama move, and then just make uh, colors inconsistent from chapter to chapter. Oh my god! Like, like Bulma no, having pink, ha Bulma having pink hair uh, early on, and then just like then it's purple, then it's blue, <laughs> then it's back to pink. Yeah, let, let's not do that. I mean, what? She was just dyeing her hair. That makes sense. Oh, no, but it's like there's like a bunch of changes. Like, for example, oh, uh, one thing that I, for example, didn't know until I was uh, looking through some uh, Toriyama art was that uh, Dodoria, 
the uh, the fat, spiky head bodyguard of Frieza from Dragon Ball, the first piece of art that shows up of him uh, shows that he's actually bright yellow and not bright pink like in the anime. Hmm. Interesting. Well, yeah, sometimes anime changes characters' colors for no reason. Or it can just be JoJo, where the artist actually says, like, no, no, there's no, there's no uh, uh, canon color. It's just yeah. whatever, it's, it's emotionally however I'm feeling for the scene and whatever <laughs> works better for this picture. It's like, that's so cool that you just get to be so mellow about it. <laughs> that's no, funny. Joe, is it right? no, it's so cool that you get to not have any logical consistency. Yeah, that's what I mean, but this yeah, JoJo is different. JoJo is different. It, it it's, works it's for that. It works for that specific comic. Yeah, it's, it, to get an audience and not have to worry about that, because if you actually like that stuff, like, I mean, great for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm hoping that this new season that has been approved, a season, chapter? I never know what to call the, the JoJo things because it's like a whole new story every time. I hope, this new, I hope this new chapter thing that is coming out uh, will be fun because I did not enjoy the previous one. Um, a lot of people really liked that one, the, the, the Giorno uh, Paris uh, one. Uh, Ariel, Ariel and I have been enjoying the early parts of JoJo, but that latest season, uh, we found it really boring and way too inconsistent for what really? they were putting out with the powers. Yeah, it's just like, it just felt like the main character has like bullshit powers for everything. You should, you know, because usually your shonen heroes will have like a very weak power that they can be very versatile with so they can come up as underdogs and creative, you know? Mm -hmm. But how do you create a threat for a main character that can literally create life <laughs> and regenerate body parts like or whole bodies it's like that's that's way too much <laughs> pretty op it allowed him to know. actually make a lot more scenes where people get maimed as hell but it lowered the stakes for even doing so at all yeah That's the thing with a lot of like comics and stuff that involve, I don't know. It's power combat. creep, I guess. Power creep. It's not even the creep. Yeah, it's combat. not even the power creep. Because like you just they just started OP. <laughs> you know, it's just like, when your baseline is I was like, I don't know like how everybody has to be super powerful right off the bat. And every mm -hmm. weak power is just kinda like, well, yeah, you're you're definitely gonna die. <laughs> No. Oh, no. That's been going on forever, though. Maybe the creator's going crazy. Ooh. I'm almost done! I'm almost done! We're right on time, too. Well, not super on time, but close enough. Some draw this door. Yay! I finished something. I'm glad I forced myself to work on this page though, because there's so much other shit to do during the week. I didn't know work on these at all. Oh, I thought you were gonna say like this page in particular. Well, no, fiendish. I have like another poster to do for someone else's Kickstarter that I'm actually gonna be busy with for the rest of the week. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, stuff for the job. Uh, that takes up most of my time during the day, obviously. Let's see. I was also editing the script a lot over the past couple weeks. So, you know, there's that. For anything in particular? Uh, this is a little spoilery. Probably would we'll talk about it off stream. Okay. I'm just managing. I have to try and hold uh, as, for as much. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, just managing like 
Because the first arc is about Cosmere going back to his hometown and like, because he has like mild half amnesia about what happened and because he's also really young when mm -hmm. when the uh, monster attack happened. So um, I was managing how exactly to portray like what he remembers and how to reveal the clues in a way that makes sense. So mm -hmm. that, that's mostly what I was working on. And like, oh, who, who did he know from the town? And like, what does he remember about how the monsters came to be about? So yeah, mm. that's about it. Just nuances. You know, I, really, I, I do tend to enjoy that kind of stuff. Um, I feel like with AC and with the rest of the guys in the art critique chat, everybody tends to like very literal uh, stuff happening, kind of like with how Nick, uh, other Nick was talking about like wanting a literal interpretation on the cover, I actually, I actually tend to prefer uh, a a metaphorical interpretation on covers because I feel like it it tells me enough about the content, but also leaves me wondering more, and leaves op uh, more space open for interpretation and creativity for a cover. And pages that have to do with those tend to be the more creative ones and more experimental with the style or layouts of pages so those tend to be my favorite on on, on books mm -hmm. i have noticed that you like more conceptual covers well the post that you did was you know very conceptual so that seemed obvious <laughs> I, I'm, I'm i'm always arguing with ac on covers because of that she likes super literal covers I and i always see like, that. You know, I can and see i'm just that. like yeah but that's like, that's like literally I'm, I'm sure. make logical sense I just I feel like yes, but you're literally just drawing that page twice. Then, like I don't care yeah. to draw the same thing twice. I want to draw something cool and different for the cover. Yeah, I Make don't know. Engage. I don't know, like what opinion I have about covers in that regard. I'm not the best cover artist. Um, it took me it took me like three tries to get the cover for chapter one right. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think. I think I prefer a more conceptual portrayal. I think as long as it's like, I like a little mystery to the cover, you know? I like mm -hmm. something more artistic and mysterious. As long as it's like not lying to you, it's actually something that happens in the story. Oh, but yeah, those, I want those like suck. a more, yeah, like conceptual representation of what actually is happening. That's what I like, I think. I was so upset the first time that happened to me with a North American comic cover. Where it's yeah, just like, it, it is, promises well, that yeah. something's gonna happen, but then it's like, it didn't actually, or actually this was just a dream of that happening in this issue that has nothing to do with that happening. It's like, Psych. you did that on purpose. Give us your like, money. You did that on purpose, you jerk one. I don't want to read it. <laughs> it's, it's such a We just wanted move. your money, like, oh, I can't, you. <laughs> I can't trust the covers of North American comics. And, and here, you know, in Colombia, they're always covered in plastic. You have to rip it to open it. And an old lady is gonna be like giving you a side eye or chasing you around so that you're not allowed to look at the goddamn comic before you open it. Oh, that's so funny. That's why I appreciate manga because the cover, the covers are very literal. It's just, here's a character. We're done. It's cool, but at the same time, it also becomes very monotonous. So like at yeah, a certain yeah. point, a lot of manga just feels like, I don't even care about the cover because it's just a bunch of the characters just standing around. Yeah. At least it doesn't trick you. I guess so. I'm not saying that either either way is good. <laughs> I'm saying that both are bad for no, you. This is a value judgment. You should do covers the way we want to. Uh, but no, I, I guess it, you're right that it's better. I don't feel ripped off with that. I just kind of went like, okay, but I, I, I do rely on opening it entirely on figuring out what's in there because it's so ambiguous a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Or like, oh, or like with Dragon Ball where the covers just don't matter. It's just Toriyama having fun with Goku doing random stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. But you know that's what you expect though, so. Yeah. I think I'm done, oh my god. Let's see. Oh, okay, yeah, though you just needed to do a door frame, okay. <laughs> I literally how, just needed to do the door frame. It's just, she's so, <laughs> she's so intricate that I thought that there was gonna be like, I don't know, like dangly stuff around or like a buffalo skin or that you're gonna have to use some more time on that background. Oh, cool, cool, makes it easy. Nah. No, it's a very simple background. I should have like 
elaborate carvings on the door. No, this is, they're keeping basically Yomi in like the servants' quarters. Because this is, this takes place in the temple, like the town temple, like the big elaborate, you know, temple that's up on the hill. But but they're like, because she's a dev and they don't care about her. They just stuck her in a servants' quarters. So there's like, you see a bunch of cooking utensils and storage all around. So yeah, this is, this is not a super fancy area. This is easy to draw. Um, all righty. Cool. Yeah. See. Yeah, I wasn't sure. You kept saying, like, I'm almost done. I was like, yeah, but that whole background that you have to do. No, no, it's very fucking simple. Um, let's see. Uh, what will be fun is this page. I know this looks like chicken scratch, but so, so, Nick, why do I do this to myself? So this page. What's going on? Um, panel one is mm -hmm. a shot of the, the temple. Panel two. Okay, here, I'm going to. This, okay, hold on. This is a temple here, okay? In yeah. panel two, you zoom out from the temple so you, until you see some uh, buildings of the, from the town in the foreground, and this is the temple. And then panel three, you zoom out more until you see the whole town and then trees in the foreground, and the temple is right here. And then in panel, no, panel three, and then panel four, you zoom out more until you're all the way on the outskirts of town and then you see East School's house and the town and the temple are tiny over here. So that's the, that's the sh this page. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to draw this, but it's going to be so much fun. Oh my God. Yeah. I oh, want I would dread uh, that. I, I hate drawing buildings. I just, I want to draw, I always just want to draw organic detail like uh, mountains and trees and monsters. I, I hate having to, uh, I got to pull out the ruler for this. <laughs> I love buildings. I mean, you don't have to pull out a ruler. I grid up, but I don't really. I I, I do, I I I do because I, I I don't have the um, mental library of uh, uh, buildings. So I, I have to like okay, this this building is a project for me <laughs> every time because yeah. it's not something I particularly like or care about, but I know that it would look better if I didn't have it. <laughs> There you go. So th this is the town, and this is what I'm gonna have to draw. Well, here's the temple. So oh, it's that same town. Land. Okay. Yeah. So this is the temple, like the big, you know, fancy building on a yeah. hill, and then you kind of have, you know, I I've actually thought about like which districts are where. Um, so you have like some more rich buildings up here, and down right here in the corner. This is like the smithing area. So you see a lot of lower buildings with like chimneys, and then this is the market area. So there's a lot more like. Yeah, you told us about that when you were making it. <laughs> My mind was crazy. So so you know it's they're in the temple because that's the, where the healing house is, and then I would I just wanted to do like a cool transition too because we go from. No, no, and I said to, I like it. It's it's fun. And then we'll be going to East School's house, which is this little place over here. So yeah, that's my next page. Um, yep. Fun stuff. Um, I guess since we're talking about covers, I'm gonna show off your um, the poster you did one more time before we wrap up. Let's do that. Do that. Where is my folder? Guest art. Yay! Yeah, yeah. So. There it is. That is Nick's poster for the Fiendish Go campaign. And if you get, uh, if you pledge to the project at the cold tier or up, you're going to get one poster by me and also this poster by Nick. Why don't you tell everyone what like the concept behind it is? Because it's really cool and you haven't mentioned it. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, I never know because uh, just like what is a spoiler and what is not in the story. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, I guess. Well, that's, that's kind of my thing. But I mean, I guess you, you've shown the the pictures of the of the body, right? Yeah, we, yeah. You were we doing already, that early on the stream. Yeah, we already know that chapter one starts out with Eskel and Kasumi finding a, a a body of a man who was murdered by one of the demons. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I guess like the the cover is supposed to be uh, a. Uh, representation of what uh, uh, I, uh, you said that he's he's called Casimir, right? Main character? Yes. 
<laughs> yeah. Don't even remember. It's it's, it's hard. It's hard sometimes with the names. It's. Uh, I know. Uh, I have like. Yeah. Ca ca when, when Casimir is looking at the corpse that they find, he can like you know looks at the wounds and and uh, I I kind of pinpoint some stuff and he starts kind of rec uh, recovering some of the uh, of those memories. The idea is for that memory to literally just be crawling out of that corpse at him. And uh, obviously, if you guys have seen those pages, especially the ones that we already have colored at the beginning, you guys will know where those uh, red eyes with uh, uh, black whites uh, actually are from. So I, I thought that that's a cool way of showing the monsters while uh, also just having something a bit more human in there. Yes, yes. So again, as we were speaking of very conceptual, here you go. These are next colors on the prologue for chapter one. So wonder who that is. We don't know. It's just something that he remembers from when the monsters were uh, came to his town. So that was that was a uh, I like like the blending between reality and like illusion. That's kind of what you were doing here, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. But, um, heck yeah, I'm super stoked that this is done. So, we can Yeah, likewise, I was, I was overthinking that a bit too much. <laughs> yeah, it was, I couldn't quite tell what it was. I thought it was just, um, like, you had explained it to me, but once you explained it to me, I'm like, well, that's a really cool idea, but I think I was also, like, thinking, you know, well, before it was in colors, I couldn't tell, but once you colored it, it made... It was much clearer because you made like the illusion part pop so much more with colors. But, anyways, um, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Whew. Well, um, I guess what else do I? I guess I'll show off the cover that I have. Or I don't know. I still doubt like my. I don't think I'm the best co cover artist, but um, I'm trying. I'm trying. I am happy with the cover for chapter one, and uh, I'm very happy with the one for chapter two. I know AC doesn't like it because it's a composite cover, but I love it. So here is my cover for chapter one. That is the book cover that you'll get if you know if you back the uh, the printing of the first chapter on Indiegogo. It's I don't know I I wanted something that looked artsy and and pretty, but also encompassed what the chapter was about. It it was a struggle because okay I had so much anxiety about doing. The first cover because i know the first issue cover is really important like everybody's going to remember it when they talk about the series they're going to be using this cover so it's like, it has to look good it has to like represent things so but i also couldn't reveal too much like i could reveal some of the other characters haven't been introduced yet i can't i didn't want to show all of the monster and I, I couldn't show that much because it's a mystery story right so um i figured this i, I would also do something that was more conceptual or representative so it's about Casimir remembering something like kind of half remembering this threat and like struggling against his past. So it's kind of what I came up with. I don't know. I'm happy with it ish, but I'm sure I'll look back in like six months and hate it, but it's cool. I hope people like it, <laughs> but here's the cover for chapter two. Um, I don't want to, I think I want to work on the pages first before like I finish this too much, but so far I'm pretty happy with it because chapter two focuses a lot more on Yomi and sort of her journey after her companions in her, in the caravan were killed by the demon. So um, it's about how she comes to join Casimir and Iskol on their quest for the monster's origins. Yay. Fun, fun, fun. Whew, all right. I think, I think it's about time to wrap up because this definitely went on longer than I was planning, but I guess that's a good thing. So, boy, oh boy. Um, yeah, thank you guys for joining us in the chat. Let's see, we still have a handful of people watching. Um, let me close this out and let you plug your social media stuff, which Nick never updates, but um, we should we should plug your social media anyways. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much just ink imp everywhere online. So there's uh, Blogspot, uh, I'm on Facebook. You still use Blogspot? And, uh, I, I like it. It's a good place to just have like my portfolio there. I got yeah. used to it. Uh, I know that I eventually, but you know, I'm super slow with social media. I, I, you, you saw it. Like, I just got to like, what's the, what's the trendy one that everyone puts pictures in? What, Instagram? Uh, Instagram, yeah. That's, 
I just got it. It's really, really so. yeah, it's a really good one. You should post more on Instagram. I'm trying no, to like I, I, promote I, you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, also on Instagram. But yeah, in, cool. uh, also on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and and uh, it's all it's uh, if you just look ink imp, it's there. Uh, yeah, let me uh, let me try to pull up your Instagram. Yeah, I'm so glad I know we had taken that name too. Oh, when, yeah. Especially when I get late to to, to social media, it's like ah, someone probably already grabbed it. I've I've seen some other ink imps but um no no ink imp nix so at least you can use that yeah or you're wait you're just ink dot imp right ah let's see yes you are you get <laughs> i should have played this ahead of time let's see Alrighty, there you go. That is Nick's Instagram, ink.im. As you can see, you've been posting your minis. That's awesome. Nick does awesome mini work, as I've been mentioning. So, yeah, and here's some of your work for uh, the work you were doing with AC. Yeah, yeah, that, that. that was, that was a, uh, again, we, as you guys all know, we, we, we I, I don't shut up about Pathfinder and D&D. So that was, yeah. that was a cool project that we got to do, and we even uh, roped up Irene to join in on the page for this, uh, uh, what do you call it? It's not a collaboration, what do you call that? It's an anthology, a little anthology of doing little kind of. D&D-inspired &D comics uh, uh, mm -hmm. on uh, Colin Bond's Patreon, uh, who's our, mm -hmm. is a really cool writer that we always are working on and also loves D&D, so. We got some monsters yeah, in fun. there and stuff. Yep, and these are your designs for that. That was fun. That was fun to work. I also did a page for that. I'm too lazy to pull it up though, but you should check out Colin Bunn's uh, Patreon page as well. <laughs> so um, that is Nick, and uh, I am Irene, and Irene draws <laughs> on everything. I'm me. Hello. So um, Irene draws R E N I E D R A W S. It's just it's in my name right on the stream over here. So subscribe to my YouTube. I stream every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm also on Twitter by Rainy Draws. My Facebook page is Rainy Draws. I'm DeviantArt, Art Station, everywhere. I'm also very shocked that nobody has gotten that name yet. But so far, it has been mine for everything except for Gmail. Somebody else has took the Rainy Draws Gmail, and I'm very mad about it. Um, I think it's, I have half mind to have mind to track this person. Name, like, it doesn't seem. It's what? It's not that common a name, is it? No, it's not. Because usually people say yeah. Renee, but it's not Renee. It's just, it's like Irene, but like a nickname form. So it's something that yeah. like I came up with. But yeah, I don't know how why somebody took it. It probably took it just to spite me. But anyways, so I am Renee Draws everywhere. Meow, right there. And also you should check out my comic, Fiendish, that is... Right now, depending on Indiegogo, I'm gonna keep on shilling this until the campaign is up. We have two weeks left for the campaign, so check it out and share it if you like what you see and let people know if you like fantasy or manga, stuff like Berserk or D&D and Pathfinder, then you will love this comic. It's gonna be awesome, so. Or um, handsome barbarians, right, Irene? Handsome barbarians, yes. Monsters <laughs> and handsome barbarians, because apparently that's what my main <laughs> character is. <laughs> I should, that's how I should spell my book, yes. Look, sex appeal. Um, yeah, I also have a fiendish. Also has an Instagram page that I don't tell people about enough, but it's fiendish.comic. And I my Instagram is Rini Draws, just one word. But if you want to follow news and, and just see information about the comic, you can follow fiendish.comic right here. And the website is also uh, available. So fiendishcomic.com. You can find out a bunch of world building information and a preview over there. So yeah. Um, whew. That was that was a very productive stream. Um, I'm glad I'm glad you guys could join us today. And Nick, thank you for co-hosting with me. So I'm not just talking. Likewise, that was a pleasure. <laughs> that was great. All right, I'll see you guys next week at 8 p.m. on Wednesday. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye.